It's time for Twit, episode 232. Dwight Silverman and Jason Calacanis join me to talk about what Steve Jobs says is the most important thing he's ever done. What will Apple do on Wednesday? We'll also talk about Google. Could it be that the U.S. government caused the Google hack? That and more coming up this week in tech. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by AOL Music and Spinner.com, where you can get free MP3s, exclusive interviews, and more. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 232 for January 25th, 2010. Bread and Circuses. This Week in Tech is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Picture yourself with a phone call sharing and explaining something visual with GoToMeeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com slash twit. And by Audible.com. To download two free audiobooks of your choice, go to Audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter at Audible underscore com. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account, go to Squarespace.com slash twit. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers all the latest technology news, the gossip, the deep analysis and the shallow thoughts of some of the best tech pundits in the world, starting with the man from the Houston Chronicle, blogs.cron.com slash tech blogs. Mr. Dwight Silverman is in the house. Hey, Dwight. Hey, Leo. Shallow are us. <laughs> I don't want people. I, I like to lower expectations. I don't want people to think, you know, they're going to get anything in profound here. Just, you know, That's chatter. Right. This is this. Well, is, we'll do what we can. We'll do what we can. Uh, Dwight is going to be coming out to uh, the um, big event, the Apple event on Wednesday. So we'll see more of him on uh, the Twit Network. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Also with us from uh, from his mansion in beautiful Brentwood, it's Jason Calacanis. Uh, I'm actually at Mahalo working on a Sunday. Working on a <laughs> Sunday, dude. Uh, barely working. <laughs> barely. If you can call being a CEO working, sure, I'm technically working. <laughs> He's working hard. Absolutely. Mahalo.com, M-A-H-A-L-O.com. But Jason also uh, does some great podcasts, some really good stuff like This Week in Startups. Oh, going so well. Going really well. And I know you work with Kevin Pollack on his show. Kevin Pollack's chat show. What else are you doing? Uh, we're going to do, we just started a, another one called This Week in Android, just to focus on the Droid operating system. So You like it that much? You think it deserves a show of its own? I'm just experimenting. I would like to see if one of these hyper niche shows can work. You know, like, I know you guys have the big ones. Like, and somebody's. Are you doing this week in photography, or is that somebody else? Uh, Alex does it, but he does it out of our studio, so it's kind of a right. joint. A joint so, like, there's always big ones. I wanted to see if like a little niche one could work as a business. I think that's so, very smart. I think that that probably will work really well. Don't the it's sort don't of like the a super, weblog zinc model you exactly. Know? Don't the super niche. Uh, I mean, of course, in gadget is the king, but right. but that's, there are Android sites, fan sites that I probably do very well. I'm just interested in the whole concept of disrupting the mobile ecosystem. I think it's much bigger than the phone system. I think it's what we're talking about, a whole operating system here. So uh, from tablets to refrigerators, I, I, I think Google has a bigger vision than just phones. I mean, it's obvious they do. They're going to talk about Netflix oh, yeah. as well. Oh, and so, cars. Let's not forget cars. I, I think yeah. that, you know, this Microsoft Auto is uh, doomed in the long run because Android's going to come along and say, hey, we'll give it to you for free. Yep. Or, or even better, do do the you know less than free model. We'll pay you to use it. The world has changed radically in the last ten years in terms of charging for software, charging for operating systems, and open versus closed systems. It's it's pretty stunning, but uh, I think we've all come to the conclusion that more often than not, open wins. Yep. Well, as more you, often than not, as you, not always. As you may know, I've switched off the uh, iPhone and uh, switched on uh, the Nexus One, and I am not looking back. Although. Uh, Dwight, you, you say you couldn't make that switch. Yeah, I, I, there are too many things about the... Um, I, I really love the Nexus One. In fact, if I was a, a T-Mobile user or had, um, 
you know, was on a network where I could get 3G on it, I would probably consider switching to it. Certainly, if I was going to use an Android phone, this would be the one I'd want to use. But it does it doesn't do enough of the things that I need it to do. I like having the choice of apps that I do on the iPhone. I much prefer having just one email client because I have used both Exchange and Gmail, and you have to have two separate email clients to do that on an Android phone. Um, as, as I showed you earlier, you can't copy and paste out of an email message, out of the fixed text in an email message. So um, there's just enough things that irritate me about it that I, there's, I wouldn't want to switch to it at the moment. But I could see myself over time being more interested in this phone. Of course, we need to see what Apple's going to do with the next yeah. generation of the iPhone. iPhone 4. Well, and, and I, I think, you know, what, what happened to me, yeah, there's a lot of things on both sides. I, I wouldn't be able to, now that I'm used to dictating instead of using the keyboard everywhere, It'd be hard for me to go back to the iPhone, but you know the biggest thing that makes it hard to go back is just simply the screen. Once you get used to an OLED screen, the iPhone screen just looks washed out, low res and washed out. Yeah, it's definitely the the screen is a is a killer application <laughs> at this point. It's amazing the difference, and you wouldn't think something that simple would make a difference. It's huge. Additionally, the you're already starting to see early returns on the rapid iteration on applications. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can just load any application from any site at any time and do whatever you want with your operating system. I know this is like a broken record for 17 twits we've been talking about it, but it actually is here now. And it's pretty compelling when you can just like, I'm going to go to Yelp.com slash, you know, the application name or whatever it is and load it. Right. And there's, there's nobody between you and, your, and you, what you choose to do with your phone. Um, I have a BlackBerry, an iPhone, and a Nexus One. And, well, right now I'm on the Droid and I'm moving to the Nexus One. And I I find I enjoy the Droid operating system better. It's faster uh, and the screens are better, obviously. But there's one or two applications that I have on my iPhone that are critical that I can't get yet on Nexus One. What, what are they? I'm curious. Um, I, have, I have a very specific one called Remote Patrol, which is uh, lets me look at the cameras around uh, huh. my house. And, that, <laughs> and the good. camera I have installed yeah. in the... A nursery, and I have a pan, tilt, and zoom camera in my nursery, so I can zoom in on the baby if the baby's with a nurse. If I'm out with my wife at dinner, like I was last night, we, you don't have any anxiety because I take literally take out my iPhone, pull up this great program called Remote Patrol. It costs ten bucks. That goes into Security Spy, which is a three hundred dollar program for IP based cameras on a Mac Mini in my closet, and we can zoom in on the nanny with the baby, and you just sort of feel calm. Um, but there are some IP phones in the Droid store I just saw in the last two weeks, so I think somebody's going to get it right. Um, and uh, there's a Sonos get... application which I is only for the yeah. Apple, but that's a. But to me, these are very specialized, and there's yes. no reason why they can't easily make an Android version of of these things. It's just a question of the market being big enough for Sonos I... or Patrol to to do it. Yeah, and I have a, uh, a, a, a thought that if we had full-featured browsers on these phones as opposed to handicapped browsers, this would be less of an issue because a lot of the applications would actually run just inside the browser. And maybe they can run at 80% or 90%, but right. maybe that's enough. And even, so, even Apple's going that way. I think HTML5 is the key on that. Absolutely, HTML5 is the key on it. And I just don't... I think Apple may have overplayed their hand, if you uh, know that term from poker, where you sort of think your hand is a little bit stronger than it is. I, I think that the hubris is coming because um, the the total cost of ownership of this phone, I saw one study that said it's half of the iPhone. What? And yeah, uh, just in terms of um, you know the monthly bill uh, over a couple of years mm. and the, the onboarding price. So I I think I have to take a little bit of a deeper look at it. Somebody can tell. I don't us know if that's accurate because I go. I, I'm a T-Mobile user. Uh, you do the, the the data prices are the same. The monthly data price is, is thirty dollars right. on well, both phones, so it's the same in terms of your data. T-Mobile has that even more plus plan, which I think is seventy bucks, but it's month to month, which I like. Uh, right. So you don't have the commitment, and the, then what about the onboarding price? Uh, what's the onboard? You mean the the hardware price? Yeah. Is it is it five hundred twenty nine unlocked one seventy nine locked with a two year. And what commitment. can you get into an iPhone for now? One ninety nine. So it's oh, a little. If you want, or if you want to get a cheaper iPhone, get the hundred dollar three G. Get the hundred dollar the three G, the older three G. So I think there's a you know maybe twenty bucks a month. That's only uh, two hundred forty bucks in the life of the phone. I I don't think half is right. I don't twenty see bucks how. a month uh, over two years or something like that. Maybe? Yeah, two hundred forty bucks, right? No, no, yeah. four hundred eighty nope. bucks. 
Right. So, okay. So maybe you save three. I mean, I know it doesn't seem like a lot for a professional guy who does this for a living, but for a college kid or for, you know, my mom who has a phone that's 11 years old now, I'm embarrassed to say. Um, wow. I'm impressed. She literally, she literally has the <laughs> next time. I, I, no, I, my mom came in to see the baby and we're out at, uh, I take her to lunch in Beverly Hills, like right, I'm trying to be a good son. And she takes out this phone and pulls out the antenna. <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, Wait, that looks like a, that looks like a walkie-talkie from the first Desert Storm. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, what is that thing? It's, I was like, I got you that when I was the editor of Silicon Valley Report. She's so like, yes, cute. I got you. You got this for me. I never forgot it. And it's very the it's very good phone. And I'm not replacing it. It probably's it's got four weeks battery life. I mean. <laughs> It does. it does. It doesn't do text messaging. It doesn't do anything. I'm like, now I know why my mom's not getting my text. Her phone doesn't do it. I thought she was not ignoring my text. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing. It, it's really funny to watch movies, even a few years old, because the phones are so primitive. Uh, they pull out the Star Trek. I laugh. It just, right. it just cracks me up. And I think this is going to be a bigger and bigger problem with tech in movies. If I were making a movie these days, I'd put as little tech in it as possible because it's going to, it's worse than hairstyles. It's going to date you. Did you see you. Caprica last night? Oh, no. Is it great? It, oh, it's awesome. It's so awesome. It, it, it literally is awesome. <laughs> like, I'm like beside myself. But they have so a, how, what is the relationship to Battlestar Galactica? I don't know. It is the prequel. It's the pre-series. It's, pre it's basically, okay. this is when Adama is a little kid. Oh, basically. oh, neat. Uh, uh, and when uh, the first generation of Cylons are made. So like the first episode, without giving anything away, is basically the guy building the first Cylon. Oh, Cylons. that's cool. And it explains, like, it explains how they became more human. Uh, and at the start how they of went it. to war. And, but it's a great series, yeah. How inspired and, is that? That's a great idea. The, the, the scene I wanted to tell you about was they basically take out a piece of e-paper, and she's on the subway or the what, mag lift, and she's basically you know doing a minority report type interface on a piece of paper that she folds up and crumples and puts in her jacket. Uh, <laughs> that's, and like, oh, that's, that's not pretty far dope. off. I think that'll happen. That's not well, far I think off. that's what Steve Jobs announcing on Wednesday, right? Well, we'll see. We're going to talk about that. I think <laughs> we, this is all prequel to what happens on Wednesday. I mean, everything changes on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that in just a second. In fact, before we get going, because I know that's going to be a heck of a conversation. I want to just to, to talk briefly about our friends at Citrix, the manufacturers of the fantastic GoToMeeting software. GoToMeeting is, you know, Citrix is really good at remote access. That's what they, they made their bones, uh, to use a Brooklyn term, on uh, many, many moons ago. In fact, Windows still uses in its remote desktop protocol the basic Citrix software. If you're, in, you know, doing high-end enterprise remote access, you're using, uh, many of you, you're using Citrix. But that High-end stuff is also what makes the consumer stuff so easy to use, so powerful, so effective. And GoToMeeting is a really great example of this. You know, if you want online meeting software, you don't want to be jumping through hoops. You don't want to have to get the IT department involved opening ports. You don't want to have to, you know, you know, DMZ your firewall or any of that stuff. You just want it to work. And this is where GoToMeeting just excels. Not only because you want to make it easy for you, but let's face it, if, if you're using it for sales presentations, you cannot make your client jump through hoops to see your sales presentation. That's just not going to fly. So what, that's why I use and recommend GoToMeeting. Try it right now for free. First of all, you're going to install this thing. It's going to take you a minute. Before the show is over, before I'm done talking, go to meeting.com slash twit. It's free to sign up. You'll get 30 days free. Now you've got it on your system. Now the next time you have a conference call going on where you want to show the client a PowerPoint or Keynote, where you have spreadsheets or presentations you want to show them, you just say, look, go to gotomeeting.com. That's all they have to do is go to a website, push a button. They enter the meeting ID, and now without installing any software ahead of time, they're seeing your computer. They're seeing the PowerPoint. It's very engaging, very dramatic, makes you look good, makes them happy because they're seeing what they need to see. Makes that conference call much more interesting, much less boring. Great for product demos, for training. Yes, even if they don't have the software, they can use it on your system after you show them how. Collaboration. I use it uh, to rehearse speeches all the time because it's real time. It's fast. Try it free right now. Just go to gotomeeting.com slash twit and you'll get a 30-day trial. It's 49 bucks, less than 50 bucks a month, which will save you thousands of dollars over business travel and lots of stress on your life. Go to meeting.com slash twit. Go to meeting's fantastic from the folks at Citrix. Secure, easy to use. You got to try this thing. All right, now let's see. Dwight is coming out here on Wednesday for the big event. You got an, you got a golden ticket, Dwight. I did get a golden ticket. I uh, they are letting me out of my cave, 
and uh, out of my spider hole, and I'm coming out there for the Apple event. And yeah, you know, as we were discussing, I do think this is probably Apple's most important announcement since the iPhone. And and you know, use the phrase it'll change everything. I don't know if it'll change everything. Well, we nobody knows, Apple, and I'm right. willing to be skeptical. But I have to say, I am convinced Steve Jobs and Apple hope and plan that it will. I'm still, you know, I'm not convinced that even a super cool, neato tablet that uh, is sexy, is thin, you know, very intuitive to use is something that necessarily people want. And I think it's going to be a particularly hard sell if it's at the prices that Apple traditionally sells at. I think the Apple faithful will line up for it and buy it you know, regardless of the price, but I'm just not convinced. And I know that, you know, according to reports, Steve Jobs has been uh, skeptical about this himself. He said he didn't want to do just something that people would say, oh, I can take this to the restroom and read on it. Um, you know, I, I think that it would be, I think to assume that it's going to be a hit um, is a uh, is a mistake because I don't necessarily think that the ma this is what the masses necessarily want. Well, I'm with you. Uh, I've said for a long time, I've been saying for a year, I don't want a tablet. And anything that we've seen that qualifies as tablet, including all the crazy devices we saw at CES, are ho-hum. But I think Apple knows that. And I think Apple realizes that they have to do something dramatically different to make this have a chance. And I can imagine some things. And I think, they're, you know, John Gruber said this. We, we talked to John on uh, MacBreak Weekly. Uh, he's the daring fireball net a blogger and, and an Apple observer, mm -hmm. he said, and I think he was quite right, it, this has to be a new a, a category changer. This has to be an inflection point because nobody, there's no demand for something that's somewhere between an iPhone and a laptop. There's no need. So Unless it was something that was not very expensive and you could keep it on your couch and it wasn't a thousand dollar device. Like, like the, the promise of the crunch pad, basically. If it was a $300 device, you don't think people would buy one or two of them to no. watch movies or on no. a plane? No. no. So here's Overside. what, here's, okay, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. And I would love to hear what you think about this. And I think that we will hear some stuff uh, on Wednesday that we didn't expect. I think there will be, Gruber says there's going to be a aha moment where you just go, oh my God, all the pieces were there. Why didn't we see this? I think it's very clear they're making content deals. I think there's content deals with Harper Collins. We've heard that leaked. Condi Nast, probably, uh, well, all of Hearst, uh, probably the New York Times. Probably, so that means it's it's going to be a book reader. Now, the Kindle's a very competent book reader, but is not so competent, I think, when it comes to magazines and newspapers because it's not in color and it's very difficult to skim and browse and jump around. A faster color device would solve that problem, especially with a little Apple UI magic. And I don't know what that magic will be, but I think some UI magic could could actually be a breakthrough product for reading magazines. There's nothing like that yet. Very slim, very elegant I believe it will have an OLED screen. We were talking before the uh, break about how OLED is kind of the killer feature of the Nexus One. Once you use an OLED screen, you just don't want to go back to an LCD screen. Now, that means it's expensive. A 10-inch OLED part is 300 bucks in quantity. So this isn't going to be a cheap device. However, I'm going to add some features that might make it cheaper. First of all, TV subscription. Apple's been pushing this idea of getting a $15 or $30 kind of network television thing where you get the best of network television automatically. Movies. On an OLED 720p screen, it will be a gorgeous screen. Gorgeous. Compete with your HD TV because it's in your lap and portable. And, and this is the most important part, I think it has to have always-on wireless, a la the Kindle, WhisperNet-style wireless. I don't think you ever com necessarily com connect this to your computer. And... That wireless is subsidized and the cost is subsidized by the content creators. So even though it's a $1,000 device, I think you're right, Jason. They've got to bring it in. They're not going to bring it in at 300 but I think they got, they, it's got to Five, be... Five, 600 700 700 is going to be what it is. It, right, maybe well, so, they'll do an LCD for 700 and an OLED for 8 or 9 I don't know. But I think subsidy is going to be the key. Multiple models. Multiple models. And that way they can offer something that... Um, you know, if you don't want to pay the subsidy, because a lot of people aren't going to want to pay yet another, you know, 20 or $30 a month, you can get it and it won't be overpriced. But if you do, if you want to get the 3G and the OLED, OLED screen, you know, you, you're willing to pay it. There's been some discussion among the many uh, rumors that have come out from the, 
from the uh, hardware suppliers that they're looking at um, a 7-inch and a 10-inch. And I could see doing the smaller version as kind of a uh, an Uber iPod Touch. Jason, what do you think? I, yeah, I mean, clearly, based on the HarperCollins stuff and the New York Times stuff, this thing is going to have an e-reader functionality. Uh, you nailed oh, it I left out Kindle. gaming. I left out gaming, by the way. Yeah, so uh, this means that it has got e-reader functionality and it runs the iPhone applications if it does... Uh, games, which means we're probably talking about the iPhone operating system, not Mac OS 10, uh, which means it doesn't need to have the same hardware footprint. Uh, so it could be more like a mobile phone um, processor, memory footprint, which makes it cheaper, obviously. Uh, I heard rumors two or three years ago, and I wrote about them, and I may have talked about them on here, that Apple was going to go into the TV business. Right. I remember that. And, that, and, and the, you were sure would, of it, too. I, well, I got it pretty from like – where I got it from – is I'm not going to say because of Apple's position and how they do stuff, but I got this from a really good place, and I'll leave it at that, and that they were working on TVs. And it makes total sense because if you think sure. about the Apple TV sure. that the, and the Mac Mini, those things could easily – I mean, in fact, people Velcro those to the back of TVs. Yep. And iMac, the new iMac, is a television set essentially. You put it on your wall. So what's the difference between making a 30-inch cinema display monitor and making a 42-inch TV 12 inches? Right. That's all. The, that's the only difference. And you know that the gearheads and the Apple fanboys would absolutely love to have an Apple television set. But what if you In could fact, make a ten inch quarter, a ten inch uh, diagonal, quarter inch thick OLED screen? Now, if you hold a ten inch screen in front of your face, that's kind of the same as a fifty inch 1080p across the room. It. Yes, and I think what you're what. We've talked about this on the show before. When you get on a plane today, uh, you see a dozen or two people with those little DVD players. This is a definitive market, portable DVD players. I don't know the size of it. Somebody in the Twit Live chat room should should go do a little research on it. I don't know how many of those are I think they're seven or eight here. inches. Those are not super big. Right. But you, I mean, how many of those do you see? Everybody with kids has those. And then you see another couple of dozen people on, or a dozen people on every flight with, you see kids with an iPod touch watching a Disney film, watching a Star Wars, Clone Wars, something like that. So it's, it's a natural evolution that there is a younger generation that would like, I agree with you, your premise that they would hold their television yep. and watch it that way. And if it had a stand in the back that made it stand as opposed to a third party stand, that would be a very Steve Jobs ish, you know, uh, feature to add. So I think the media player with a subscription and an e-reader is, is, is as close as we're going to get without seeing it. But, yeah, it's, it's somewhere in that kill zone. Is that enough? I mean, you're an expert on content. Is that enough? Um, you know, anything Steve Jobs makes is going to be intriguing. We know that. The it's going to be is, gorgeous, right? It's going to be gorgeous. The Kindle is a is a, is a, is a total success, uh, in, and they shipped more e-books than they did um, – uh, regular books on a couple of days in Christmas. It's a little bit of a misleading stat, but uh, that, I think that was sold through Amazon.com, not in stores, obviously. So ebooks are a definitive trend. Apple is a natural for the ebook category. Why they're not in it already is peculiar, and why there's no ebook reader on the iPhone that they produce is a little bit weird, don't you think? So obviously they're saving that for something. It, and it it's needs an to be bigger. Plus plus and plus. It, e reader plus plus plus. And that's where OLED I think really does well. It is a lower power screen. Particularly crisp, very legible, very readable, and it's not. And now it's not great in daylight. It's usable in daylight, but but not great in daylight. So the Kindle, you might keep the Kindle for your daylight e-ink reading. But I I do think that this is perhaps a compelling device, especially if you think of it as a content device. Now here's the interesting thing: Do you put a browser on it? Maybe I don't think you put email on it. I don't think you put you know you, you put an on-screen keyboard, but just to be used as a Kindle keyboard is used to find content. I, I don't think, think it's a content creation. I think it's a co it's why, consumption. Because I don't... I mean, if you, can, if you can do email, why not put email? If it's going to be the iPhone OS, which, which has a very nice email client, I think email is a natural. I think you definitely put a web browser on it. Yeah, well, I mean, remember, we're dealing with Steve Jobs. I mean, why wouldn't you put cut and paste on the iPhone? Right. I mean, it took, it took a year. I mean, he, <laughs> it's quite possible he'll leave a browser out for now, and then he'll get, you know, beat up into doing it, just like he got beat up into putting a second, you know... Uh, but uh, why but wouldn't he from the get-go? I don't, I don't Simplicity. see Steve Jobs. Simplicity. Steve Jobs. I, think, simple, yeah. I, think what, I think you're selling this as a crossover device. If you've got a laptop, and every, you know, you don't need this. If you've got an iPhone, you don't need this. This is a crossover device to be sold. And now, by the way, I got laughed off of This Week in Google yesterday by Jeff Jarvis. 
because I said, this is to be sold to people who don't have computers. He said, who would that be? But but I think it really is a, it's it's not to replace your laptop or iPhone, it's to replace your TV. Yeah, and and for people who want to read books and magazines on the on the train, right. you know, that there are a lot of people like that in New York City who maybe are not using their computers to consume their media. It's, it's on this your will be it's, their first shot. At it's it. in the bathroom. It's on your breakfast table. It's on the it's on the subway. It's on the train. Uh, it's, people will use this device if it's the right price. It's not going to be the right price out of the gate. So I think actually that's where that's that's the only part of your logic I don't go for, uh, Leo. Is respectfully is that you? I think that. They will go at a high price, like they always do. Get, you know, a suckers to buy because we have to have it, and then you'll see it available at ninety nine, whatever, a two ninety nine next uh, at Christmas time. So it's going to come out at six ninety nine, and by Christmas it'll be two ninety nine with a subscription. I don't think now, they can sell a expensive. compelling device. I think that uh, this is. You're right. These are this is this. There's two sticking points that are huge. You got to do the content deals, and right now, you know, if you look at what TV shows or movies you can get on any of these places, it's like. Who wants to watch that? So that's problem number one. They have to, he has to get, you know, he'll get Disney, but he's got to get everybody to play on this. And number two is how do you how do you make the price low enough and yet make the make the hardware compelling enough? It has to be what gorgeous. If it has a, what if it has a PVR in it and a digital tuner where I can plug it into my TiVo or my satellite dish and I can record stuff to it and then take it on the go? I think it's too complicated. You're silent. You're silent, uh, 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 Dwight. If you can plug it, unplug and plug it. I think that um, I think that Steve's going to work really hard. This is why I have this issue with email and browser. I think Steve's going to work really hard to make this a super simple device. What about what about what about the HD uh, over? Over the airwaves, why why not put an HD? He might have he might have Y die in it. This wireless display technology that Intel's been talking about, you could put that in it. Actually, there you go. I think that's important. Let's put Y die in it. <laughs> well, it also has 802.11 in, which means you could easily stream HD content. That's over basically Wi -Fi. you saw wireless. Well, you, you weren't at CS, but why, the, Intel was showing this wireless display technology, right. which basically that's what it is. It's Wi-Fi, but it's but you get a receiver from uh, D-Link or yeah D-Link that attaches to the TV. And then the laptop, and, and Dell's doing this, and HP's doing this. The laptop will stream to that receiver. So it's just a simplified thing. I don't, you know, Steve does not like a bunch of stuff hanging off the side. He wa I think he wants a beautiful silver and black monolith. Self-contained. Self-contained. I don't think he even wants to put a DisplayPort adapter on there. But if you could figure out a wireless connection that just kind of worked, I could see Steve maybe doing that. Yeah, then maybe he'll come out with something where the new, because new Mac towers are coming out supposedly, and maybe there'll be some way to connect this to your computer if you want some of those functionality, you know, some of that functionality. You know, where so remember the be, MacBook Air? Remember he put in, <laughs> didn't have a DVD player, but he put it on every Mac, this kind of remote DVD capability. So you yep. could put the DVD in the iMac and you could see it on the uh, MacBook Air. That's the yeah, kind I of thing. I use that to install. I use that to install stuff. So yeah, maybe that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And, and it's got to be that transparent where you just go, oh, well, you just put the DVD in the Mac. But you yeah. know, if you already have this, if you already have this, this ecosystem of applications and content for the iPod, the iPod Touch, and I'm going back, Leo, to your saying that he'll he'll keep it simple and won't include some things. I think you have to have everything that's on the iPod Touch and the iPhone in order to make it compelling and to make people go, oh, well, I'd rather have an iPhone instead of that because I can do all this with it. I mean, he's got to have a web browser on it. I don't think you cannot put a web browser on it. Yeah, maybe. I just think he's gonna, he wants to create a new category. I don't think he wants to cannibalize iPhones or laptops. I want, think he wants to make something that has never before been seen. But a so web can, browser will it have a phone in it? Can no, you make no a phone. phone. No phone. No. No phone. A web phone. browser at 10 inches is a different experience than a web browser at three and a Especially half. Especially in a 720p OLED. And device. particularly if you want to do e-commerce. Yeah. If you want to encourage e-commerce, no, yeah, you've got yeah, to yeah, have right. a browser. I just, I know how Steve wants to control it, the channel, though. And a browser kind of <laughs> opens it up a little bit more than he might want. Well, this is, this is going to be very interesting. I think everybody's agreed that something's going to happen Wednesday that will either be huge or a big, fat dud. And if that's the case, that's a big story. There's no question. We're going to do... A full day of coverage. We start at 9 a.m. Uh, from outside the event. Andy Anako and I will be there. We'll go into the event together. Uh, we'll do our best job. Alex Lindsay will be anchoring here at the uh, at the uh, Twit Cottage uh, with uh, as many people as we can get in here, and we'll do the best job we can during the event. You know, Steve never allows that to be streamed, 
But usually there's somebody getting something out of there. And if not, we'll at least follow the, uh, you know, I'll be typing and we'll follow in Gadget and then GDGT and everybody typing. And then when we come out of the event, I hope you'll come over, Dwight. Uh, certainly, Andy will be there. We'll get a Jason Stella Macworld magazine, and we'll do a Mac break weekly right after the event, talking in obsessive detail about what actually <laughs> happened. And then we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going till 4 or 5 that afternoon. So a uh, full day of coverage of whatever Apple announces. It's going to be interesting. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a huge day. And uh, are, ha, do you know anybody who actually claims to have seen anything on the QT? Because nope. we have people in this in the Twit circle who you know will say like I can't off the air I did see something I do and so nope. none of those people you don't have like a Kevin Rose whispering nope. in your ear nothing there has never been a tighter lid the only problem they've had is these partners and I think even the New York Times is being a little disingenuous when they say oh we're going to do this next year uh, I yeah. I think they I think this is one of the tightest lids ever and I think that's because Steve Jobs the man who is the king of this. Has, is back. Is back. This is his, it may be his last, I hate to say that, but this is very important to Steve. They've been. We know they've been working on this for seven years, since 2003. This, I think Steve sees this as every bit as important as the Macintosh. This is a big announcement for Steve, and I don't think he, I think everybody at Apple knows, your nuts are on the line here. This isn't just your job. <laughs> You're going to lose a body part. If you say word one, you know, Kevin asked for all the rumors. I don't know if you saw this. He said, let's do a yeah. roundup of all the rumors. I haven't seen anything. He didn't right. post. It, There's no post. And, Gaw and Gawker did the whole uh, Gawker offering got to pay nothing. people to break their NDA. $100,000. <laughs> nothing. And, you know, yeah. if if um, if this is, is a dud uh, and it doesn't produce something, you know, you said it, it'll be a big story. But kind of what does that what does that say for Steve Jobs if it doesn't? If it doesn't score, I, you know what it said. It said, "Well, what it says is Steve is willing to swing for the fences, and he always has been, hasn't he? He's a gutsy guy, and I think Steve is not satisfied with anything less than excellence." Super what's the What's the last dud? Was it the cube? I mean, when's the last time he would say he did something that was like embarrassing or just bad? Just I, bad. I think the iBook, the first iBook, was pretty bad. I think the cube was not his fault. That was pre Jobs. Was uh, it because I thought that he loved that thing? Oh, maybe he did. Maybe that was Jobs. Yeah, that, that was his. Because he wanted that to get rid his. of the fan. Remember, he like, yeah, he's like, I can't stand right. the fan. Nobody wants a fan. Nobody wants a big computer. Everybody wants an object of art on their desk. And everybody's like, what? I think you can make the case that the next Cube and the Apple Cube were uh, successful as concepts, just they didn't sell. Um, the iBooks the Mac, sold well. The Mac Mini is the, the Cube, Mini? just flattened. Yeah, Mini. And, the, you know. Apple TV is not is kind of That's a, a flop. That's a flop. And Steve Depp, they... Steve, they Steve, deprecated that. He, so I was going to say, Steve deprecated it, saying, oh, it's a hobby. Right. I don't think Steve ever had his heart and soul in that thing. What about mobile yeah, That was weird. I mean, why did they come out with the Mac Mini and the Apple TV? It, it makes no sense because I was talking to somebody yesterday who has the Apple TV, and he's like, yeah, I just can't pull up a browser. I can't do this, and I can't pull up Hulu. And I'm like, I go on my Mac Mini now, right. and I, I will load Hulu or Netflix in much the browser. Better. Much better. Much, it's such a great Boxy experience. running on an Apple TV or XBMC or Plex running on an Apple, uh, rather on a... Um, uh, Mac Mini is a is a great experience. It's just the, and you, the connectors. And it's more are extend, little... It's more extendable. You know, right. you can you can upgrade your Mac Mini even though it's difficult. But I mean, it's got all more ports and all that kind of stuff. I don't. I, I just don't understand that product. No, it's not that Steve is perfect. He's you know the app the iPod Hi Fi that was a. In fact, oh right. Th this right. could be that I went to Cupertino for the big Steve Jobs announcement that was Apple's iPod Hi Fi, in which he said, "I wanted the perfect stereo system. I've thrown out my stereo system for this." And socks, iPod socks. And this was the announcement. And I, I went out shaking my head. So it's clear that Steve could, you know, he could swing for the fences and whiff. But he hasn't done it often. And, and you got to say, there's no one in the industry who has four major successes. The Apple II, the Macintosh, the iPod, and the iPhone. There's no one with that kind of success. And this could be his fifth. And that's enough to rest your laurels on. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think anybody could ever say he's not the greatest technology product producer ever. Or maybe Sony and you know Sony in their heyday, Apple today are the two best producers of hardware on an innovation level. I mean, the only other person with innovation would be like some of the labs you know that existed in the '60s and '70s. Sure, right? sure. I mean, Be Bell Labs and uh, Lucent, yeah. and then uh, of course uh, Xerox Park. 
Yeah, I mean, those, but that's, but that's a research facility. I mean, I guess he, well, in some ways, he has become the heir apparent to that. Well, well uh, look what happened. He went to Xerox Park. He saw what they were doing, and he productized it. He made now he had the Lisa, which was a flop, but that was the precursor to the Macintosh, which is anything but a flop. I mean, he was the guy who productized that. So, yeah. he, you know, he Xerox Park famously created a bunch of great stuff, which they never were able to ship. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I I I I on the one hand I I hope for a huge hit cuz I I I it would have, it would revitalize the industry to have another category, a new category. I think the I think the the ebook the ebook done right with multimedia functionality is a slam dunk because I the only reason I'm not buying a Kindle is because I can't check my email or watch a movie or listen to Audible on it. Right. If that device was cut, had a regular screen, I would have one right now. Right. And I think I'm not the only person who's not buying it because it doesn't do email, right? I mean, um, or, or surf the web. I mean, it's, it's, the, 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 the Kindle is this absurd device. Like, the people who really love to read books love it. And then everybody else who would buy it is like, what, I can't check my email or I can't check <laughs> the website? I mean, what? And what? I can't, it doesn't have a color screen? It doesn't make any sense to me, you know, right. like, the Kindle it's, is it's so a, close, and it's and you still love it despite all of that. You still love right. it. It's so weird. Yeah, it's it's primitive. sort of like uh, I don't know. It's like C three PO or something like that. He's just you know, it's like a, <laughs> it's a flawed. It's a droid that is flawed in some way, but it's got character. Right. One so. of the end. One of the most fun things about this will be is you know at the end of Apple events. Uh, they'll sometimes have the executives sit down and do a short Q and A with the press, and I'll ask it, or, or I'm, I'm sure someone else will will ask if if they bank heavily on uh, content from books and magazines and newspapers to say to Steve Jobs, "Okay, Steve, I thought people don't read anymore," and see kind of how he he responds. said that, didn't he? He did say that. That's why they. He, that's why Apple wasn't doing an e-reader. Do people, remember though that Steve Jobs also said, "I can't imagine anybody watching video on a little screen." Uh, he is famous for deflection, and it could very well be he's just merely deflected. Well, and and uh, and Google's getting pretty good at it too when they <laughs> said they wouldn't do their own phone. Yeah, <laughs> we love that phone, by the way. Now you, do, I know Dwight, you're not yet a convert, but Jason, I think soon you're going to be a Nexus One convert, and I cannot get over this phone. I just love this phone. I, I have it right here, I and just... I'm going to be switching from Droid to it. And all I need is the IP-based cameras, maybe Bejeweled too, which is definitely going to put. Oh on no, there no, yeah, I'm... there's a good one that's a Bejeweled uh, clone that I really like called. I have to play Bejeweled now because when I'm online for Starbucks or something, yeah, no. I have OCD. I wish it had. Be, I wish it had more games. Although you know, the number one category on uh, Android is in the Android marketplace is games. Jewel Lust. Take a look at that. It's basically bejeweled, but I think it has a, it has a storyline. It's very playable, and it makes this nice plinking sound. Oh, makes, that's that's bejeweled. Yeah, it's that's, bejeweled. That's, that's bejeweled. That's satisfying. Yeah, it's a. I can't stop playing it. It's actually a little bit better than bejeweled. And I I'm have a, do you bejeweled. want to just be quiet for a while? So you yeah, would you mind? I'd, I'd just like to play <laughs> yeah. for a little bit. I, this game, uh, it's terrible that you actually showed Bejeweled or we talked about it because this game is is basically the crack of the... of the. Uh, well, it's like Tetris was. It's like Tetris. Yeah. It's beyond Tetris. And now they have one that on the iPhone connects to Facebook. And so I play that one, yep. I Now I see on my leaderboard all my friends and I look at it and my You're right. uh, two sister-in-laws are like... Their moms. What's you your know, high at, score? What's the high score you got on that? I think I'm up to like 290. Wow. 80,000 on Blitz, on the one minute Blitz. Blitz. Blitz is the one that's shared. I play Blitz, Blitz and a few shared. of my friends, like Nicole Carrico, is like at 250,000, like every week when they, because yeah. they start it new every week. They start how do new you, every week. How do you get that high? I can go, I can get like to simple, 80. Very simple. The most important technique in Bejeweled, I don't know if I should say this to screw up my scores, but um, is to go <laughs> fast. And when you go fast, you get. Uh, cascading a multiplier. jewels. So when you have multiple jewels break, it multiplies, and then you get that that jewel that says two x, three x, four x. Right. Then what you do is, at some point while you're going fast, you get one of those mega cubes, which is a five in a row that blows things up. Yep. And you only ignite that. You leave it like a grenade until you hit like four, or five, or six x. Ah. Because then it's five, four, or five, or six times more That's, effective. Ah. So the only thing you should be worried about is getting the percentage up. And then at some point you'll have an opportunity to hit that. That's how you get good scores. Eighty, if it was, if you were on triple score or quadruple score, would be two at forty. Right. You have to get to that. That's the key element. Yeah, because uh, I accidentally, I didn't know how, I got to one hundred twenty thousand. I thought, what did I do? I don't know what happened there. 
Right. It's, it's the multiplier. <laughs> it's but the anyway, multiplier. It, it shows why Zynga is doing so well because now I'm in a competition with my two sister-in-laws every week. Yeah. You know, and I'm, when I'm basically, you know, in a commercial break, if I'm watching TV and live, you know, I've, I've turned this thing I've been on. playing Blitz too. I love it's that. Yeah. It's bizarrely addictive. But that's, this, this is why I think a tablet with gaming, that kind yes. of social gaming. Yes. I mean, I just, it's, I think this is going to be that. I Steve, look, Steve's got to look at all of this social. Uh, what do you, what do you call this? Social, social gaming, social crack. Yeah, social <laughs> this crack. addictive social gaming. He's got to. He's not stupid. He's got to be looking at this and realize how powerful that is. Right, and so basically, this is a Nintendo. This is this taps into the Nintendo Wii effect, which is your sister-in-law, your mom, my mom. Your, your, you know, what your if you aunt. could get Farmville? Oh, so Mark Pink. Oh, can you imagine Farmville on a 10 inch tablet? That is the killer. I think we figured it out. That's what Steve Jobs is going to announce. Is your, you got like a 7 inch farm or a 10 inch farm, and it's going to be subsidized by Farmville. I think we just hit it. That's it. It's the virtual currency in that. That would be pretty epic if people just be like, take out their farm and they got people on the subway, not reading the New York Times, just planning a farm that is meaningless. That's, That's the end of civilization. It's the end of civilization. It's the <laughs> end of this end of network. If you don't hear a Twit episode for a month or two, <laughs> you'll know why. why. It'll be Leo and I are playing Bejeweled <sighs> on a 10-inch screen with a thousand gems. I think we've hit it. And trying to beat each other's scores and getting nothing accomplished. I think we've hit Leo, it. this is, we're in an economic tesseract and you need to not be this promoting this kind of thing. This is the worst possible really time. It would be Steve Jobs, is, he'd be like Oppenheimer. Now I am death. He will be like the guy <laughs> who invented the atomic bomb. And, 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 but it was an economic atomic bomb. And, and in 20 years, when, when we're just living in rubble and nobody's producing anything and everybody's just looking at their tablet going, I need artichokes, we'll know. <laughs> Mark Pincus and Steve Jobs collaborate to end the world. Uh, <laughs> it's the we, end of it's civilization. It's sort of like theocracy or Wally. You know, like in Wally, they're on those those floating. You know, right. That's exactly what it is. He must, tablets, he's saw, doing nothing. He saw Wally and he said, "That's it. That's it." The Pixar guys gave him the vision for the future: Im art imitating life or life imitating art. You decide. <laughs> oh my God! I think you know what? That's the final, the final jewel. Just clicked into place. Social gaming on that tablet. It would be pretty amazing, actually. When you there think are some about social, the effect There are some, that, like, Wi-Fi games. If you're on the same network, you can play, like, there's an air hockey game for the iPhone. And, uh, but the problem is, is that you have to be on the same network. If you could do something <sighs> at that level, if, that fast, that What if that the uh, tablet turns into a tennis paddle? Right. People be swinging their seven hundred dollar tablets. That thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. Bad, <laughs> bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. No, this is like Surface. It stays there. What about um, Steve Perlman's on live company? Yeah. Where he, you know, we've we talked about this. My friend Ryan Schrapp, by the way, he got a DMCA uh, cease and desist. Uh, I have to ask him about this from uh, on live because he he was a beta tester and did this all these reviews and really great videos and really was great and he's been told to take that down. You can't do that. You can't report on it. I hear it. it's sick. It's well, it's really interesting because the idea is you could do a, a low end device. In fact, one of the devices they show looks a lot like an iPhone attached to a TV or a better a good display, and then over the internet it gets the game, and the game is rendered uh, out there in the cloud where you have faster computers and yep. sent to you. Now, what if this? What if something like that is built into this thing? Um, yeah, that would be very interesting if the mainframe style computing was done over the network or something like that. But I, I don't know that it's necessary because he's got this huge library of casual games. Right. Casual games that, are it. Yeah, the casual games don't require that much. And you know that the processing power in the, you know, the the mobile processors are going to double and triple. And, you know, it's, it's sort of, they're going to, they're good enough now. They're only going to get better. What about uh, DRM? Will there be DRM in this copy protection? Has to be. Oh, right? Sure. Well, if be. he's doing the macro, if he's doing the iPhone application, it is right. Yeah, it's built in. So, and it's pretty clear why. Why would he go and put Mac OS X on it? You know, it makes it more complicated. Yeah, no, you don't put OS X on it. And, you know, some of these uh, these mockups have a dock. No, 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 no. It's I no think way. it's simpler That's... than an iPhone. It's it's just psh, boom, simple. You know, you you would mention the idea of of going going to the cloud for a lot of the computing for this. You know, uh, Apple is. Uh, building that uh, data center yeah. in North Carolina. Yeah. 
And so, um, what if you, you know, what what if that was kind of the farm for a lot of the stuff that they were doing that was offline or online, rather? Well, we're we're going to find out Wednesday. I'm I think this could be huge, could be the biggest dud, and we will talk about it next week, and we'll talk about it. I'm calling it our obsessive compulsory coverage all day Wednesday, <laughs> from uh, eight thirty or nine a.m. till the till we can't talk anymore. Uh, right, right here. So your voice is so hoarse that you cannot utter the word Steve Jobs. I, and look, I found it, Farmville. I love it. It's Farmville. Delicious. I can't stop playing. It's amazing. Uh, Jason's on a rant. He's on a rampage. He's on a tear. He is ready, uh, uh, ready to destroy one of the key companies in the internet, and he's going to tell you why in just a little bit. But before we do that, I want to mention our friends at Squarespace.com. This is a company that I don't. I think is a, a miraculous company started <clears throat> as a as a kind of a blogging tool by um, two guys in college. It's now become, I think, you know, one of the most amazing um, hosting sites. So it's both hosting; it's a hosted website with incredible software. That's that's the combination we're talking. I want you to go to squarespace.com/slash twit. You could take a look at it. All right now, in fact, you can try it free. It makes it very easy for you to take your existing site, whether it's a, a, a blog with movable type or type pad or blogger or WordPress, and move it over. If you've got a photo site, it's oh, the, you'll love the galleries. You'll love the templates. You'll love the ease with which you can take these professionally built. I think there's 50 professionally built templates and then customize them so it's unique. You know, it's always been this kind of uh, push and pull between having professional templates but then having every site look exactly the same. Squarespace has totally solved this because they give you the great start, the incredible templates, but then you go from there to make you know make it your own to customize it with this very easy drag and drop Ajaxy customization. And the hosting is great because it's v it's the virtual hosting that they're doing means that whenever your site gets hit, they can add bandwidth easily you never run out of bandwidth you you just it's it responds to being dug or slash dotted like nothing and seo optimization is automatic stats are brilliant jason you were going to say something I, I was yeah you know i've been i've been tracking this company for a while it's a new york company and i'm looking at the examples on their site if you go to the examples oh, tab just, and look at them. It, this is really interesting for businesses you know you used to hire a firm and pay what what, what would you pay 2500 bucks no thousands tens of thousands, thousands yes thousands. i mean yeah but even if you're doing like a mom and pop store you know, yeah, maybe you get your uncle, cousin to do it. Your cousin knows somebody. You pay three grand or five right. grand, and it's you can never edit it again. And that person goes off and becomes a lawyer, and you never hear from them again. Like this is the sustainable solution for fifty bucks a month for a business, or thirty bucks a month for a business, or for a band if it wants to have a professional site. Absolutely, um, and you get support and all this kind of stuff. They got an social iPhone integration. Oh, the iPhone app is incredible. I mean, I have to say, yeah, that's three a years ago, these guys applied for TechCrunch forty back in the day and they had already had the product out so it sort of wasn't qualified for it because you know you have to launch the product brand new but i, I was very impressed about it three years ago and they've really ex it it's it's really a high quality product oh, i think great. anybody who's building a business site should very much consider it i mean and for 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month whatever they're charging i mean it's nothing for what the value you get so before you go spend the four or five thousand dollars building the site you should try doing it yourself for 30 bucks if you look at the uh, uh, topically the Yale uh, Haiti site, imagine the traffic that this has sustained over the last two weeks for the, uh, the earthquake fund on Squarespace. Never down for a moment, you know. Uh, Mark Echo uses it. Um, I mean, I, just look at some of the examples. And the thing is, they all look different. They all look unique. They don't look like somebody kind of you know uh, templated a site, and yet it's so easy to do. It's so straightforward. You're just gonna you're gonna love. Squarespace. Why don't you try it free? Go to squarespace.com slash twit. 10% off if you decide to buy, but you can get to two weeks free right now. No credit card needed or anything. And uh, it's just, if you're thinking about building a site, you're right. Uh, a small business or even big business. A lot of big businesses use Squarespace now. It's just a great choice. Squarespace.com slash twit. Give them a try. Um, I, I think you're going to like it. So Jason, you know, I got your newsletter or your, you call it a newsletter, your email, I guess. I'm old school. It's my email newsletter. Yeah, I just email it to 19... It's 19,000 people now. It's kind of ridiculous. It's fantastic. Uh, and it's free. To, is it still free? Can people just sign up? Yeah, it's free. You just... Uh, you go to... If you go to uh, bit.ly slash Jason's List. 
is a form. I put up a little Google Doc. I import it every couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, like a thousand people seem to sign up a month. I've been doing it for a year now. I, you know, this is what kind of replaced your blogging. Although occasionally you will do, I know with something like this, when it's a big story, you'll put a, put it in the blog as well. I have to put it on the blog now. So I, I send it to my email people first and then maybe a couple hours later when I, you know, get the time between changing diapers, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the blog. <laughs> How is the baby, by the way? It's, I have to say like, it's, of course it's life changing, but it's, it's one of those things where people tell you this is amazing and it's not overrated. No, it's underrated. It is. But people say all the time, like, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, no, you don't know. And I'm like, yeah. I, I just sat there this morning. I had like that alert time for an hour with her. And oh. now she just the last week has started giggling, oh. you know, or, or just smiling. And I'm just sitting there for an hour staring at my daughter and she's laughing and we're, giggling. And I'm just like, my life is yep. complete. My, I, I, I didn't realize how. Uh, how much more there was to life until I spent time with her. You can't know. And, and, and every, it, we're all dads here. And, and, and we've all, I'm sure, Dwight, you've had this experience. You see somebody who's about to have a baby and you just, you just kind of shake your head. You cannot communicate what is about to happen. You're about to walk through a door that will, everything's different. It, it makes you a better way. person in ways you have no idea yeah. is coming. Yeah, it's really true. So congratulations, Jason. I'm glad you're, I'm, you're getting some I'm time. I'm loving it. And, yeah, uh, that's wonderful. Everybody told me we take my I would take my edge away, but I I, no. I still have this thing no. where when I see somebody getting bullied, you're still a son of a bitch. <laughs> I, you know, I, I if I see a situation where people are being bullied, that seems to I, be your new thing, isn't it? Because it is. you did I that with the, think, with the angel funds, and now with I this. did it with the angel funds, and I'm doing it again now. And Jason's it's, list: why we should boycott Comscore, and perhaps why traders should short their stock. That's the incendiary thing at the. It's pretty incendiary, except I'm. I go on to explain, like I do not own any stocks. I do not buy stocks. I know nothing about. I was stocks. surprised to see that you only have bonds and angel investing. Well, I put it this way. Bonds, when I buy bonds, I buy the California ones that are backed by revenue. What that means is they get paid off by the money that comes in from the taxes for the toll roads. There's, there's no way for them to go bankrupt. Um, you would, you'd have to have stop having revenue in the toll Plus, roads, they're double tax free happen. in California, which is a, a very in nice thing in a 7% or 8% or whatever So basically, the hell I can sleep all night. I don't have any problem sleeping. You're I safe. know that. Yeah. I know my nut's not going anywhere. Right. Uh, and but the, uh, and so now much more risky the angel investing but much more fun right. I imagine a lot of fun I did four last year and I'm going to do ten this year I typically put twenty five thousand dollars to work or fifty thousand dollars to work it's not a lot of money for for me at this point in my career but it is um, oh it's huge where, for the peak, the company you're investing in not well, just for the dollar but because they now say Jason or or Kevin Rose I know you do some stuff with Kevin they they can say your name and that carries a lot of weight. I, I I guess it does. It's kind of flattering. definitely does. Yeah. But I think that the bigger value is that I'm a product guy, and I'm I've been got my 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 butt kicked many times in business. I've been through the I've been through the war. You know, I've laid people off at two companies. I, I've just I've I've got my ass a kicked lot so many of times. knowledge. Yeah, that I can just I, I basically give it myself when I said, listen, yeah. when you can't talk to your spouse, when you can't right. talk to your board, and you can't talk to your employees. Right. Call me. Been there, done that. Yep. Because I have been there, and it's yep. the loneliest thing in the world to be an entrepreneur sometimes. Oh, I can imagine. And, and well, you are now. And so think about the times when, you know, when the bills at oh. Twit or, oh. you know, the money wasn't coming in, and your wife or your kids need stuff. And you're like, I, th maybe this is going to work. Maybe it's not. You know, we had great advertising for uh, two months, and now nobody's calling us back. You know, th these things happen in every business, and it, it's it can. I'm be, calling uh, you when it does, Jason. <laughs> you, I mean, it is. It, it's, you have to have somebody to talk to. So that's what I provide. And, also, I, and by the way, Jason is always. Jason is not an We don't have investors, but Jason has always been a wonderful sounding board. You've taught me so much unwittingly, I think, because sometimes it's just you being on Twit, uh, talking. But I've learned so much from you, and the times that we have corresponded. You are a wonderful, valued uh, uh, advisor. You're really great at this. I, the way I look at my life is I'm, I'm, there's a term in poker called free rolling, which is when you get uh, basically put into a poker tournament for free. Uh, so like full tail page response, you're, you're free rolling. No matter right. what happens, you're, you're not going to you lose You can't anything. lose. You're, you're, you're I, using the house's money. I have officially decided that I'm free rolling on life. You know, like <laughs> Congratulations. my entire life is a, is a goddamn free roll. Good for so you. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, I'm going to play bets forward. on startup companies and pay it forward pay and it have forward. a great time. Yeah, good for and you. And when I see somebody being a bully, as the, was the case in Karetsu Forum, and as was the case in, is the case in Comscore, 
I'm going to step up and say something. And you know what? This this opened me up to tremendous attacks from people, personal, professional. Well, I can imagine. And you know what? I just don't care at this point in my career. If somebody's going to be a bully, I'm going to use my platform to call them out on it. And if there's ramifications for it and people want to unsubscribe from the list, they can. Yeah, you, you, you're in a position where you can do this. And I think a lot of people don't feel safe doing this. So let's talk about Comscore. There are a couple of yeah. companies. Uh, Quantcast is somebody I use. Google Analytics uh, I also use. Comscore is a company like that that publishes traffic numbers. Correct. But they publish traffic numbers. And so in the early days of the Internet, we looked at our log files. and We're like, wow, we have log files. We can go look at this stuff. Yeah, what do you need somebody like this? I know exactly right. my numbers. Right. And so what happened was the, the average, they went to, they created this company, Comscore. They, they got 2 million people to download toolbars and they made a sample. What the sample is, is just like Nielsen. So they went back right. to the old technology. And you say, why would somebody go back to the old technology and do a sample? It makes no sense. We have actual logs we can look at. Well, they did this because now they, once they reach scale, everybody had to pay them. And for years, when I had Weblogs Inc., they would underreport my sites and I would call them. You mean, would, would they them. intentionally underreport them? Well, they're doing a sample. So their sample doesn't include people just, at work. It's just not accurate. It, it, and it's not big enough. It's inaccurate, right. like any same, other The same way and Arbitron is on radio and Nielsen is in television. Exactly. And the bigger you are, the more accurate it becomes for two reasons. Number one, it's, it's, a, it's a sample, so you have a greater chance of getting picked up. So, And then number two, from what I'm told by everybody, uh, and, and there's many blog posts you can see, uh, there is some correlation between when you're a subscriber, or previously there was some correlation between being a subscriber to Comcast Comp score and their ability to your numbers to be correct. Uh, now that was undercover. Like people, that was like always this rumor in the industry. I begged them at Weblog saying, "Please fix our numbers. It's it's really impacting my ability to sell ads on Engadget, Autoblog." And they told me to pound salt, and I had nothing I could do. And I tried to say, "This is this is wrong," and nobody listened to me. Now I've got a bigger megaphone, and so uh, they came out and said, "You know what? We're gonna, you know, for ten years we told you sample was the best." We're changing to be like Quantcast and Google Analytics now, ha! and we're, ah! we're going to include that. And everybody's like, "What? <laughs> this is after a decade of telling everybody in the world that tracking pixels are wrong, and here's why." So, <laughs> Quant the way Quantcast and Google Analytics and, 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 and others, Chartbeat is another one that you you told yeah. me about. I know you're an investor yeah. in Chartbeat. Fantastic. You no, not an investor yet. Oh, you're not. Advisor. Okay, just advisor. You put a little JavaScript, or you could put a, a, a one by one pixel in there, but you put something on the web page that then calls their server, and so yes. they can monitor it. Yes. The reason you have to do this, I mean, yeah, I have logs. I know what my logs are, but but you, but an advertiser is not going to believe me when I say this is my traffic. Right. So you need an verification. You need an independent third party that people trust, like Nielsen or Arbitron. But right. Nielsen and Arbitron have always been kind of famous in broadcasting as being, you know, it's the dirty little secret of broadcasting. Broadcasters don't; they know the samples are wrong, but they're terrified of getting accurate numbers because they're afraid of what they might find out. Right. Uh, but but the web's always been accurate. We've always right. known. Yes, and so here's the punchline. They come out with this new system that uh, they're calling Media Metrics 360 Methodology, which is basically using the tracking pixel and using their 2 million sample, which has never worked well. So they're basically saying, uh, that old system that we told you was the best system, it's not actually the best system anymore. I'm paraphrasing here, but you use this new system. And by the way, uh, at least this was the news last week, it's $10,000 a year. Whoa. And it's like, okay, well, what happens if I don't pay that? And they said, well, we'll just produce your numbers like we've always done it. Inaccurately. So basically, yes. So basically, here's your choices. It's pretty binary. One, you uh, pay us this money, and we will produce correct statistics for you. The same correct statistics you get for free at Quantcast.com or Google Analytics. Pay us the money. We fix it. Don't pay us. We use our old system, which is sample-based, which we have just told you is inaccurate. And we admit it's inaccurate now. That's why we've added the pixel tracking. You know what that sounds like to me? What? A, a Sopranos episode. <laughs> it sounds like extortion. <laughs> it would be Pay a shame us, it. if something were to happen to your numbers. Listen, Leo, uh. you have numbers. We have numbers. <laughs> we have a business to run. You are making money. <laughs> we should make us some money. Yeah. You have to eat. But this, we have you know, this is where this is where it, it goes south is the complicity of media because, and I still see this all the time. Media is always quoting compete. They're always quoting uh, another sample size. Yeah, compete sucks. Size. They're always quoting Alexa 
and Alexa-based services, and they're always quoting Comscore. And, and we all know, because we know what our numbers are, that these don't relate to the actual numbers. And yet right. the media reports these numbers. Which is what I've done. I've begged people, please, journalists, bloggers out there, do not use these numbers because you're, it's self-reinforcing. But now we have Quantcast that's out there. And Quantcast is crushing it. And if you go there, good, good. I love Quantcast. If you look at the top 100 sites, top 200 sites, you see this thing quantified. So they do a sample, and then they also do tracking pixel. And you can start you're starting to see that out of the top 500 sites. Like I think they've got a third of them, or two thirds of them, have now done it. Right. Comscore is about to go away, and this is where I was getting at. I think that their 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 stock and their company is going to go away because. You're charging for something that is now free. It's the mm. same thing with Google Analytics. Who's going to pay right. for Omniture if Google Analytics is for free? Uh, and so uh, I basically unloaded on them and said, listen, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this the same way I did it with Koretsu. We're going to do it the hard way or we can do it the easy way. <laughs> I, I, I basically laid out the demands and I said, I want you to stop charging companies or go to a freemium model. But you should – be committed to giving everybody the same correct best methodology for statistics, regardless of if they're a customer of yours or not. Yeah. And I think that's completely reasonable. Absolutely. And uh, some now, people are now, when out you, about it. And, Dwight, Dwight you must quote uh, site numbers. Do, do you have any policy about which numbers you use? What is the... At the I think the case with, with a lot of journalists is they get who's, who uh, gives it to them the They fastest. get a press release. And they get it right. It's the easiest yep. to get. Yep. Um, the kind of things I write about, I don't generally do that unless I'm um, – and, and I, I stay away from sites like Alexa and those that use the tracking – I mean the, the sampling because it generally means that you aren't getting um, the right. accurate results. You want something right. you know, where, where it is based primarily on your um, – uh, you know, on the number of cookies and the actual hits. We use uh, Omniture – at the Chronicle okay. for our site numbers. Okay. And when I can get it from somebody like that, I do. Interesting, Jason, that um, Linda Abraham has responded to you. And, the CMO um, responded very well. What, what did she say? Right. Oh, <laughs> she mad at you? Go ahead. Would she be mad at you? What did she say? She went on tilt a little bit. I don't have it in front of me. I'd have do, to pull it you, up. Do you have it? It's, it's pretty good. I'm just yeah, looking at the, 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 the traffic numbers I get from Quantcast. I just... Have you? Is it your experience, Jason? If you compare it to your logs, that it's it's accurate. It should be right. Um, Quantcast is probably about one to five percent less than Google Analytics, and I think it's because we put Google Analytics at the top of the page because right. we want to make sure those numbers are totally accurate, right. and we put Quantcast at the bottom because we don't we want to save time and make the experience faster for users. So there is another issue that's going on here. We have Google Analytics, Quantcast, and Chartbeat. And so I am going to work with those companies and ask them to make one tracking pixel that they all share. That would be nice. I can't put four tracking pixels yeah, yeah. on my Yeah, I already have way too much unique. I have way too much JavaScript on my page and so a lot of people whoever, who listen to Twit block JavaScript anyway because we keep telling them to do that. So but. that's the thing about the tracking pixel. The, the the goof of this all is the tracking pixels are 5% less, 10% less than reality. Right. Because of People on phones, people with JavaScript turned off, people who leave the page or stop, hit the stop button, whatever. You know, it, but who cares? If it's if it's 90% correct or 95% correct, that's great. But Comscore has been off. I mean, you just ask anybody to, to go look at their Comscore numbers. That's why Comscore doesn't publicly put out their numbers because they're so bad um, that they, uh, they are like a magnitude off, like 100% off, two times off, three times off. When I, I had to beg them, I'm like, you're showing in Gadget with 100,000 people. We have... Two million uniques or a million uniques, and they, and they wouldn't. And you know what? This is what when you're a bully and you bully the little kid, and then the little kid grows up and he gets big. Uh -huh. You better be careful because you know what? I had I didn't have any influence then, but I can tell you I have influence now. Right. And I am not going to let this issue go until they capitulate. You don't mess and with a kid from Brooklyn. A kid from Brooklyn. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious about this. I'm not. And they can sue me or whatever they want to do, or that you know, just like the Kretsu foreign forum threatened to sue me and they didn't um but we will we'll solve this one way or the other and the way we solved it with Kretsu forum was i launched the open angel forum and now it's right. in four cities oh that's and great it's free. oh congratulations that's great so, to hear you know and, and i think quantcast is a solution so i would launch my own uh metrics company or invest in one but i don't have to do that because quantcast is already out there doing it and they're, and they're doing a bang up job so i think the market will solve this problem i think so too i think it has to 
We're going to take a break uh, and talk about Jason's favorite subject. But before uh, and when we come back, I do want to talk about a very controversial, well, maybe not, but a very uh, scary column uh, by Bruce Schneier, who was one of the most respected security guys in the world, uh, who says you can blame our government for what happened to Google. That is coming up in just a little bit. But uh, first, I do want to mention. OK, go ahead, Jason. Audible.com. Are you Audible. are we mentioning Audible? Audible dot com. Oh, uh, you know what I love about Audible now? <laughs> what, do you, what do you love about Audible? <laughs> well, I mean, there's so many. How much time do we have? By the way, but... Audible loves Jason. Audible says uh, we'll buy two ads when Jason's on the show. <laughs> they love <laughs> no, you. I, I am not even goofing. I no, we, know, no. I, this is sincere. I you know I, I, I did this long before. Everybody knows I love this company for a long time. Since 2001. I loved them before Amazon yep. even bought them. Yep. But now. Uh, on Blippy, which you're a member of, I'm a I love of. Blippy. By the way, I love Blippy. I'm an investor in it. Full thank disclosure. you for uh, thank you for doing that. By the way, disclosure here also. As long as we're talking about that, I don't invest in tech companies, as you know, Jason, and uh, I know. and I'm sure Dwight, you don't either. But it's just kind of no uh -uh. What, what we have to do so that people know that when we talk about something, it's not because we're getting a deal out of it. Uh, or right, you don't invest in anything. Yeah. I I inv I've invested in four you're, you're things. You're not a journalist, always, exactly. No. You're, you're, and I always say uh, right up in right up front, I'm an investor in this. Yeah. You know, like I say, because I'm proud of it. Uh, anyway, but Blippi uh, lets you import the Audible stuff. So now I've been sharing my picks from Audible on there and a whole discussion. And, you know, it, it's kind of cool because I have the gold membership, which is two credits a month. Right which is the one I recommend because I can't listen to more than two and I am getting backed up now. And the great <laughs> thing is they let you, um, if you don't use the credits that month, it's not a problem. No, it's a misconception. They add up. People have. Yeah. They add up. Yeah. So then let's say you finally take that vacation or you got that long flight or you're going on a road trip. You might have, you might have two or three credits left. You can bat, you can bank those and they have a list of all the top books of the year on there right now, like editors' picks. They have there's some there's some uh, audio book awards. I don't know the name of it, um, but they had yeah, it yeah, yeah. on their site. And so I literally went through they're all the, the different audi categories. audies. I think they're called the audies. Yes. And so I went on there and I, I'm looking at my 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 blippy.com slash Jason right now, and I got bright sided how the relentless promotion of positive thinking, um, <laughs> what a great blah, blah, subject. blah, because that yep. was one of the best self help. Yep. And then I did worldwide rave, creating triggers that get millions of people to do stuff. And then talent is overrated, what really separates world class performers from you know, other people. And these, this is the great, uh, the great way to do it is you just find the award winning books and you skim the cream. And you're, you're, you're basically guaranteed to get a winner. And even if you don't, you listen to the first two hours of it, you get something out of it, you move on to the next one because you're going to have 24 audiobooks a year. You're going to have a library. And, you know, I, my wife now listens to the ones that I'm done with. I can burn a CD. You know, it's a, it's a I very. I was really glad you got Audible to, uh, you got them to add Audible because that's, that's just. The good part about being an investor in the company, yeah. <laughs> I told them, I said, they're like, how, what do you think? What should we do? I was like, you got to get Audible up there. Yeah. And I, they got it up in like two days. And they're like, can you give us our password, your password? I'm like, absolutely. I'll give you my password to Audible. And they did all the back end work to, to, to data normalize. Um, but you can see all the cool. people on Blippi who are, that's I, the cool part. Is Blippi you can click fun. on Audible there yeah. and you see all the people who have Audible subscriptions. And right. it's a lot of intelligent people. It's pretty much a known fact that if you have an Audible subscription, you increase your IQ by, I think it's 12 to 15 points now. I think that's the, uh, yeah, at least. It's 12 to 15. It's somewhere like 10. Because, you know, when you're, when you're an adult, I don't want to get too deep into this, but as an adult, I mean, you don't, when's the last time either of us were in school? When's the last time we learned anything? This is when, this is what Audible is about. It's the way to make yourself a better person, to learn more and, and educate yourself after you, you don't go to school anymore. And you've got kids, you've got a family now, you're too busy. Half an hour drive turns into a half hour lecture. Yeah. And you don't have time to read because you're on your computer screen all the time. I, I can't say enough good things about it. And if you are a fan of the show This Week in Tech, which you do get for free, by the way, uh, you should... Um, you should really thank Audible. Absolutely. And you, should thank Square, you should thank Squarespace and you should thank Citrix. Um, yep. Citrix. And I'm going to do something here. This is a little freestyle here. I hope you don't mind. I have a Nexus One. I bought 10 of these because I gave them away to Mahalo users and people who follow me on Twitter, like you know, user appreciation. But I saved this one for specifically this purpose. Whoever thanks the sponsors right now, oh, wow. and I think it's at audible underscore dot com, at uh, Squarespace and at Citrix, or just thank those three people. Put pound twit on the end. 
I'll hit the hashtag for pound twit. And um, I think I'll, it's I'll I think it's Citrix underscore go to meeting. Is that what it is? I don't know. But you have to do yeah. it on Twitter, right? On Twitter, you just thank the three sponsors, and I will give this to somebody randomly. So you're just going to so, go through those tags and find somebody and just and just pick somebody. My assistant is. <laughs> <laughs> let, let Tyler do it. Yeah, well, I'll yeah, tell you what. I'm going to do it. Yeah, he's good. I'm going to give you six hundred dollars device, right? Yeah, it's fantastic price. Thank you so much for doing that, Jason. I can't thank you enough. Yes. That's very uh, yeah, kind. It's of a you. great phone. And I'm, it is a great phone, and you know you've probably, uh, if you listen to Twit, you know you've heard me singing its praises like for the last two weeks because I just fell in love with it. I actually wake up in the middle of the night and play with it. Oh, are you talking about the phone? <laughs> the, oh yeah, right. Of course. Yes. Oh, sorry. The phone. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. Yeah. Back to the audible ad. <laughs> back to the audible ad. Now I'm going to make name, just name the show. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I wake up at night and play. With and it. I play with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make. I'm going to give you a pick now. I do have to say this is, and it's kind of ironic that you're doing this because the uh, the uh, unfortunately the one thing that is missing on Android to me the biggest single thing missing on Android is an audible player. But I have it from. Trust uh, me, on, it's going to be made in the next ten days. It is. No, I have it on good authority that they are working on it right now. Generally, the way Audible works is they give an SDK to the partners and they ask that the partners develop it for the phone. And I understand they're working with Google to do an, a, an Audible uh, player, and that will be coming soon. However, until then, it does work on your iPhone, your iPod, your Sansa, your Zune, your Kindle, your GPS devices, hundreds of different devices. You you can also listen on your computer. Download your books instantly. High quality. They sound great. My recommendation this week, I went into the Audible Frontiers section. This is where they are digitizing uh, classic sci-fi that was never recorded. What? Uh, well, a lot of times sci-fi, there's no money in sci-fi uh, audiobooks. So a lot, you know, and a lot of these guys are shoestring publishers. So, for instance, William Gibson's classic Mona Lisa Overdrive has never been an audiobook. So Audible recorded it, released it last month. This is a great audiobook. Jonathan Davis reading. Let me play a little bit of Mona Lisa Overdrive. I'm a huge Gibson fan. The ghost fan. was her father's parting gift, presented by a black-clad secretary in a departure lounge at Narita. For the first two hours of the flight to London, it lay forgotten in her purse, a smooth, dark oblong, one side impressed with the ubiquitous Moss Neotech logo, I love William Gibson. I just his stuff oh, he's is my favorite. Neuromancer created the cyber uh, punk genre. Uh, his books count zero, Burning Chrome, All Tomorrow's oh, Burning Parties. Burning Chrome is great. Isn't Burning all Tomorrow's Parties great? Yep, they're now all on Audible thanks to Audible Frontiers. Thank you Audible for recording them. And if you're looking for a great way to listen to books you just don't have time for, audible.com/twit2. You're going to get two books cuz you're going to sign up for the platinum account. You can cancel it anytime those books are free, yours to keep forever. And I would suggest Burning Chrome and uh, Mona Lisa Over Overdrive, two of the great William Gibson classics, but you get to pick. There's 70,000. I'm sure you'll find something. Audible.com slash twit2. Mm. And if you tweet, thank oh. you, Citrix. Thank you, Audible. Thank you, Squarespace. Jason will be looking for those hashtags. Or Tyler will, <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> one of and one of you will win a uh, Nexus One phone thanks to Jason and Mahalo. Of Thank course, you, Jason. Course, I really appreciate that. Yeah, that, big supporters of the of those sponsors. I mean, they love you. I tell you, they, you know, when I went out there, they, Don Katz said, "I love Jason." <laughs> and Don's a great guy. I, you know, I see him at some of the industry events, and you know, he had a real vision for the company. And people don't know this: this company's been around a long time before it was owned by Amazon, which is another one of my favorite companies. Um, and they struggled. In oh, the early yeah. days, man, oh, did yeah. that company Audible was struggling. Yep. They had they couldn't get the they couldn't get the rights to the books. You got to get the People publishers. Thought, this is the same problem they Apple's going to have. Couldn't get them in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It was really hard for them. And you know what? Don Katz and his team, I give a kudos to them. And I didn't believe in it when I was a journalist. I had I had written some pieces a little negative about it, like because I didn't the experience wasn't perfect. And they were doing this before the iPod. They had their own MP3 That's player. Right. That's right. And. That's how visionary Don Katz was. That's how visionary Audible is. And now they're just hitting their stride. I mean, every book's in there. And to, to do things like take the old classics and actually have them read, I mean, that's a mitzvah. I mean, it, that's really just... Isn't it it's great? Like, it's, it's like when Scorsese is like, you know, he's, he's, Scorsese's so the man. And the other night he's like, he's accepting some Lifetime Achievement Award or something at the Golden Globes. And he's like, listen, the most important thing we can do is preserve these films. And then he rattles off 16 names of films mm. and they show the audience... They have no idea what these films are. <laughs> the audience, these, these actors are like, huh? what film is that? They don't that's know. why they got to preserve them. These are, this is our heritage. Preserve. This is our cultural heritage. And he's doing it. And he's Good. doing it. And Don Katz is doing it. Great company. Yep. And uh, really, it's great that they support 
independent media because where are you going to get this week in tech? I mean, tech TV, you know, shot themselves in the foot, then they shot themselves in the other foot, <laughs> then they shot themselves <laughs> in the leg, then they cut their leg off. I mean, they had all this great programming and they just I know it's sad. destroyed it. And it's being reborn again by the people who have a passion for it. That's what independent podcasting is about. And I, I just... I love no, the I'm very, I'm with you. I'm very grateful to the, these companies because it's taken a chance to buy an ad on a podcast. Um, yeah. Now they know they've been here. These guys have all been with us more than two years, and so they know that works. But but that first buy must have been a little scary. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, obviously, the buzz is you know uh, significant because when I go places, I mean, I I had people. I told you this one story. I went to Australia. The guy came on the, the, the plane, and the first thing he said to me was, oh, Audible. I love Audible. <laughs> I know. You You're know? famous now for that. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. I'm not even a – should I be, you know, getting a favor <laughs> being a super fan? I'm fine. I'm, I, I like being a super fan of things. No, that's what yeah. it's about. We're fans What's of technology. What's wrong with that? No, we yeah, are. And a super fan. It, that's, the, that's the key to the whole thing. So let me I talk know. about Bruce Schneier, who is um, – he's just – th right, Dwight? I mean, he's just the guy when it comes to security. He's uh, he's so uh, famous and so well known in terms of security that you know the the Chuck Norris facts the uh, the joke about how what a tough guy Chuck Norris is. Somebody uh, on the web did a Bruce Schneier facts, and it's very very similar if you're into yeah. security geek humor. Yeah. So if if you become the subject of an internet geek meme, you've uh, you're at the top of your game. CNN uh, published uh, an article. Bruce's blog uh, is Schneier S C H N E I. ER.com and a must read Schneier on security. But CNN published his essay on uh, the China Google hack. Uh, and I hope, uh, in their opinion section, I hope it gets a lot of attention. The headline US enables Chinese hacking of Google. Now, un unfortunately, he kind of makes a uh, statement in here, which, he, you know, I don't, there's no reference, no link, no backup. So I don't know. He's taking it as read that, and I'll read it. This is the quote. In order to comply with government search warrants on user data, Google created a backdoor access system into Gmail accounts, and that is the feature oh. Chinese hackers used to gain access. Further, you know, There's no source. There's no source for that. He doesn't say where he got that. And the information that both Microsoft and Google, which hasn't really said anything definitive, have put out that it had to do with a vulnerability. <laughs> that came from but Google. You think it came from Google? They're back channeling. Because they They're don't they don't they want everybody to understand, look, this is here because the government makes us do this. Yes, yes. Yeah, they'd rather know they'd rather channel. people think that than think that they're using Internet Explorer six. <laughs> <laughs> or that, or that they created this backdoor because they want to look at their competitors' emails that are using Gmail or right. startup companies, or that they're doing something nefarious. Like, why would you put a backdoor in? You don't need a backdoor if you're an email provider. You know, if somebody forgets their password, you reset it. Why would you need a backdoor? Right. Well, this is his position. He says Google's system isn't unique. I'm quoting again. Democratic governments around the world, in Sweden, Canada, and the UK, for example, are rushing to pass laws giving their police new powers of internet surveillance in many cases requiring communication systems providers to redesign products and services they sell there's also data retention laws which require them to keep it and of course as we well know um, the national security agency has been eavesdropping on all of us with the help and compliance of at&t and verizon who've been protected by congressional acts so that they're not liable for this and the communications assistance for law enforcement act in 1994 required them to do so um, so, so he says official misuses are bad enough, but it's the unofficial uses that worry me war. Any surveillance and control system must itself be secured and infrastructure conducive to surveillance and control invites surveillance and control, both by the people you expect and the people you don't. So I have to, because Bruce is so well respected, I'm just going to have to Take his word when he says there's a back door. I think you're probably right, Jason. He must have gotten that from Google. Yeah, that's 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 the writings there. And interestingly, in the same article, he says NSA analysts collected more data than they were authorized to. This is talking about, of course, they did NSA and and used the system to spy on wives, girlfriends, and notables such as President Clinton. That we know. And that we know. Yes. Any system that can be hacked will, will be hacked. Any system that can be abused will be abused. Therefore, you, 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 it, it's reliant on the people who build and manage these systems to 
to really take this seriously and not build backdoors into it. Um, I, I wonder what would happen if somebody provided a service. I mean, this would be an incredible company. Provided an email service that was absolutely secure with no backdoors in it and that didn't have any – had a data retention policy of zero, which basically meant we delete every email in the system after 10 days. Hush so you mail. could have – Oh, really? Is that what Hushmail is? Phil Zimmerman, uh, the guy who created PGP, worked with these guys. Um, I'd, I'm, you know, who knows, though, because if the law requires everybody have a backdoor, even Hushmail have a backdoor, but it uses a PGP in the background for fully encrypted mail that no one can, uh, in theory, no one can read. Um, and I, knowing Phil, I mean, look, Phil is not the kind of guy that's going to put a backdoor in anything. I guess the only way you'd know for sure, though, is if it were completely open source, right? Because then somebody could look at the source and say, well, here's the back door or not. Or if there is indeed a law. I mean, I'm not familiar with a law that specifically says that you have to have a back door into email systems. There is a requirement for wiretapping of communication right. systems. But I think that has been interpreted to primarily mean telephone. Well, that's I don't the question. You know, we've right. got these FISA courts. We've got these... You know, black courts, no one knows what's going on inside them. I understand we have to fight terror, but what happened, the, the, the upshot of it is, though, that all of this stuff can happen completely behind closed doors, and no one will know. We don't know. The and, press doesn't know. No one knows. And the back door exists, and because it exists, people will walk through it. And if, if uh, Schneier is correct, uh, uh, it's possible the Chinese walk through it in this case. And then, it, 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 then you got to ask the question, well, who's really to blame then? <laughs> Um, I think it's pretty obvious who's to blame. Yeah, Yahoo. I mean, according is, to the journal, Yahoo was also targeted in the uh, in the Chinese attacks. Um, and they didn't step up. They did not right? step up. They, as Google yeah. did, and Yahoo has really always been kind of complicit, more complicit with the Chinese government than anybody. They, yeah. You know. Well, it's part of the reason and, why they sort of got out and did the. Um, uh, they sold out. They yeah. They sold out because you know what? I think Jerry Yang, who is Taiwanese, yeah, could, he couldn't live with himself. Yeah, uh, and it was pretty famous at the D conference a number of years ago. The Wall Street Journal is really excellent, like seed level, you know, event. Uh, Terry Summon was on stage, and they asked him famously, like, "What would you do?" You know, and what would you do if um, this guy Shervin asked him, "What would you do if the Nazis?" you know, uh, came to you asking for, you know, emails or something like that, you know, the same way the, you know, communists, you know, um, yeah. China have. And he says, well, you know, we really, who knows what you would do in what situation? There's a lot of factors. It was, a, it was the worst answer you ever heard because the only thing you say when people ask you that Nazi question is like, I would fight to the death you right. know, against the Nazis. Even and if you wouldn't. <laughs> you say even, it. Right. Even if you're a coward. Pay you, it lip I mean, service. Exactly. And, uh, you know, no, knowing what you know now, of course. But, but the fact I, I that he didn't is almost, it's, it's an it's a, it's a admission it's a of tell. guilt. It's a tell. It's a tell. It's a tell. It's a huge uh, tell. And basically, Yahoo, I don't think Yahoo management is the same as Google management. The founders, this is obviously Sergey, is very much driving this. And he's a, both those guys, very principled guys. And uh, Sergey uh, has immigrant parents. Uh, and um, I think they suffered a little you bit. You know who else? You know who else? No spine. The Obama administration. They were going to send a complaint to China, and they backed down. It's a, this is an incredibly complex issue now because of the geopolitics and the intertwining of our uh, well, economy. They could bankrupt our economy, but just stop by by no we longer could, buying our paper. We, and we could create a civil war in theirs by not taking their imports. Right. Uh, they, you realize how many people have moved from the north to the south just, to work factories. Just to work at Shenzhen and the other factories. You and those places. And if we stop buying and consuming their products, uh, they, they, they had a stimulus package that was, you know, 20, 30 percent of their economy. We had a stimulus package of one or two percent of our economy, you know, and um, it, it, they would they, it's quite possible China could go into a complete civil war. Uh, I know that sounds like something out of a William Gibson novel. No, uh, it's completely possible. This is what's at stake they right walk now. At the, they're walking the edge economically. They always have been. They had a famine under Mao that killed, I can't remember what it was, 21 million people. Yeah, when you have billions of people and an uncertain future economically and you don't have the sustainability uh, to, to feed them, uh, to, to, to house them, uh, you know, it, it could turn into a really big problem. And uh, – they're, they're not their economy is vibrant in some ways but it's 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 controlled in others you know right. they they regulate their 
uh, currency, et cetera. So the interdependencies, I don't think that people actually know what would happen if we disengage from each other, you know, let <laughs> alone good. went to war with each other. Yeah, and this good. is over – this is the, the, the mind-blowing thing is this is over a couple of dissidents' email boxes. Right. Right. This is what shows you, you know... This is what the dissidents uh, got what they wanted, <laughs> which is de well, de destabilized the Well, and wars have been started for last. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And, if, if, and there's just one or two people who are responsible um, for holding the line. Two tremendous entrepreneurs in Larry and Sergey. Uh, and you have to give them a lot of credit because uh, there's not many billionaires... Eric, Eric didn't want to do it. Eric didn't want to do it, supposedly, uh, you know, and people have different philosophies, you know, engagement versus isolation. But at some point, you have to draw the line. And I think that they, they picked a good point. Do you think is, it has anything you, to do with the fact that the, uh, Larry and Sergey have announced they're going to sell off $5.5 billion worth of shares and no, give up majority no. voting power? That was predetermined. That, they were going to do that already. Okay. Yeah. Anybody. <laughs> it's not like much, saying, okay, I think the, I'm going to get out of here. No. Anybody who has that <laughs> amount of wealth in one. Yeah, stock you want to diversify. Sets, they set a they set a computer program to diversify them over right. years. Right. Uh, automatic trading, so they can't ever be, you know, said to be trading on inside information. Um, I got a tip for them: California bonds backed by the Highway Fund. It's I heard it. From yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's enough California highways. <laughs> five point five billion for them to back. No. Oh well. <laughs> they have to buy some Chinese bonds. <laughs> so, Leo, no, you it, mentioned it, Yahoo. What about Microsoft? Microsoft. Uh, you know, Steve Ballmer said they would do. You know, they would follow the law in order to do business in China. And that uh, they and he kind of mocked notification. Google. He said, Google, these guys are dopes. Right. Right. I mean, that, not exactly those words, but the but and then furthermore, when they when asked if, they're, if they were hacked, they said, well, no, we think everything's OK. Of course, Internet yeah, Explorer, you know. <laughs> a little bit of a problem. Right, are they using Internet Explorer 6? <laughs> Maybe they're using That's Firefox and so they feel safe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Google didn't well, have that much in terms of investment in there. They were still building kind of what they were doing. They had right. of the companies that are right. that exist that had a foothold in there that could have been hurt. Um, they're the ones that had the le the the least to you lose in terms of well, pulling out. Probably the intentionally. Probably intentionally I, because in the past four years they've been very careful not to put servers there, not to put any other assets in there, to to do as little as possible and still have a foot in that market. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, if that didn't uh, make you angry enough, how about this one? PayPal has frozen the assets of WikiLeaks.org. Ugh. WikiLeaks is an amazing... Lame. Uh, PayPal, wake up. Uh, an amazing site where... Uh, a very valuable whistleblower site. They have published, uh, you know, hugely important documents. If, if, you know, if it weren't for WikiLeaks, there's all sorts of stuff we wouldn't know is happening. And now, uh, as of the 23rd, which was uh, yesterday... PayPal has frozen their assets. PayPal does this from time to time with various um, sites. I, I live in fear that they're going to do it with our assets, but that's why I transfer money out as quickly as I can because uh, that's the donation system we use. We're, we're working to make it expand it to Google and other systems. But, uh, uh, I'll so tell you what's uh, crazy about this. I just sent you a link in the chat room from The Guardian, <laughs> uh, which has a picture of... Um, the Chinese, uh, a Chinese Google user putting flowers on the Google office logo. Oh, isn't that great? The, the Chinese users now are backing, the Chinese citizens and users of Google are backing them. Uh, well, of course this, they are. Right. Well, this, but this says something now. Where they are uh, trying to use our systems to enslave and, you know, possibly murder and torture their own citizens, their own citizens are protesting in favor of the American companies. This gives you. This should give you um, Boy, that, hope. I, I, this guy is very brave, though. I mean, here he is pictured in the paper doing this. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That, well, that guy's probably in a secret prison right now. Yeah. But you know, this, I, I I can't say enough about the two entrepreneurs who actually put their asses on the line for what's right. I mean, it's thank you, Larry and Sergey. It's so rare, you know. It's like yep. you, just these people are such sellouts and and steve bomber you know i i, I don't even expect him to do the right no, thing no. ebay you know what i don't even expect no. ebay to do the right no. thing uh it, it's just so sad that they and wikileaks is a fantastic site and whistleblowing laws we give rewards a percentage of the of the um money recouped by the government because of irs tax evasion and this kind of stuff goes to whistleblowers that's that's a formal program that huh, our government I didn't know has. That. Wow. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's uh, so we we are actually trying to get more people to whistleblow. Hmm. So why is eBay freezing their account? I don't it makes know. no sense. Just eBay thought I'd bring it up. Said why? Have no, they, they haven't. I just, they have know, not explained. They don't it. have to really, and they don't. I just thought I'd yeah, bring it up. It could be a court order or something like that where they just said freeze it, and you know, they, they do just, the simplest thing. Right? They don't have. They do the simplest. Don't thing. expect spine. Yeah. Spine is it a rare commodity in corporate in the corporate world? Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap it up. This is, uh, boy, this is a great show. There's a, there's a bunch of other stuff we could talk about, like Italy saying they, <laughs> they want to uh, regulate online Flash Player installations. Uh, what? Italy or Illy? Italy. Sil Italy. <laughs> Silvio uh, they, Berlusconi uh... is pushing through measures that would give the state control over online video content and force anyone who regularly uploads video to obtain a license from the Ministry of Communications. Is this because they got pictures of him with his mistress or yeah, something? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Or wasn't he the guy who, yes. who was yes. having the parties at his house with the yes. strippers? Yes. <laughs> this will not happen again. You don't understand. No. Leo. I'm sorry. You I can't do this. I got to tell you. They stole it from my private collection. I can't have had these on the web. No. This uh, is a crazy. He's starting to sound like Mario. I mean, I want to have it on my <laughs> I'm and gonna, this is, I'm going to put it on my computer. Too. I'm not going on your oh yeah, oh, they're going to rush this through. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's and by the way, YouTube is one of the companies that would be uh, heavily infected by this. Yeah, it would force yeah. YouTube to police and affect police content, which is undoable, untenable on a cut site where they're uploading you know 20 hours of video every minute. I think the right thing to do for these companies is to just extract themselves. There's enough money to be made in democratic countries. Get out. I think that's a great. Service, I think that. I think you're going to start seeing that, and and, and it, because this undermines the fundamental premise that the internet is global, and right. if, if you're going to do this, if you're going to if you're going to balkanize the internet, well, okay, we're not going to play. Yeah, opt out. Opt out. All yeah. right. Uh, White House unveils an iPhone iPod Touch application. Where's our Android version, White House? Uh, O'Reilly, this is a good one. O'Reilly drops ebook DRM sees a hundred four percent increase in sales. <laughs> Uh, wow! Yeah, no, no brainer. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, that's David, something David totally Pogue sense. had uh, had done that with his books, which is also O'Reilly, and he noticed, you know, he was very nervous about doing it, and he noticed that after uh, doing it, that his sales went we up. We just gotta keep now, saying every time this happens, just keep reporting it, so that people will finally get the right. message. You know, right? Here's what it is: like, I, I I buy the book, I'm done with it, I want to give it to somebody else, right? You know, or I'm at a, I mean, even if I'm at a company and I'm a small company and I buy one book for HTML and I give it to seven people, you know what? I wasn't going to buy it anyway. Or all you're making me do is buy the print book and then hand it around the office or have somebody photocopy right. it, right? You know, and and you know, as as much as we love Audible, Audible's required by publishers to do the same thing. Uh, I'm sure Amazon's required on the Kindle to do the same thing. It's really the publishers yeah. who are going to have to say, just as the music industry did, okay, it's not working. And uh, right. uh, uh, you know, kudos to O'Reilly for for having the the sense to do that. Well, I think that's it has to be it has to be content owner driven. The, the companies who are the enablers, the, the technology companies, they don't have a choice. So you, you can't go to say, oh, you know, it's it's this person's fault or that person's fault. I mean, if you look at Apple, they showed the uh, labels that they could on DRM stuff. It right. took how many years? Right. But they showed them it's not that big of a deal. Don't be yeah. too scared. No, exactly. And so that's why I report this. It's going to be okay, guys. You can drop the DRM. It's not helping. Calm down. It's Calm not the end down. of the world. Anybody knows? Anybody know what the acceleration rate for sales in uh, the iTunes store was after they took the DRM well, That's off. a good question. How uh, much you know, faster it went up? Remember, EMI was the first to do that. It was the big experiment everybody watched. And I do believe EMI's right. sales went up quite a bit when they uh, dropped it. So uh, I think that was the impetus to finally drop it completely in the music industry. Yeah. Guys, we're out of time. I really appreciate your spending some time with us. Of Good course, show. all of our listeners. Jason, you're the best. Jason Calacanis is at Mahalo.com. He's got a Nexus One. <laughs> He's going to give away. You still have some time if you want to tweet. Uh, thanks to our great sponsors and tell them uh, you appreciate the support they give us. And uh, and then <laughs> Sergeant, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Riley there will... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go through it and pick one for the next one. I don't even want to inquire on how he's going to do it. We'll just assume it's random and above board. I'm going to pick whoever has the best avatar. <laughs> okay. You should look at mine. No, I... Am I, I eligible to change the in on this? you so got jealous. one. We've all got one. We don't get to play the game. <laughs> I don't have a James Bond avatar. Oh, I do. I thanks, know you do. Thanks you to Jackie Super Free. You want, you want one? I can Jack, Jack, get Jackie to do one. Jackie's, I, Jackie's who, a, who doesn't want to be James Bond? Come who on. Wouldn't? Jackie's a great designer down here on the peninsula. She brought us cookies. 
And uh, uh, she, she's a great photographer. And I said, and she said, well, can I do you? Easy on the cookies. You got that weathing scale. I'm not eating. I know the why things. I know you got one too. I got one. I'm, 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 I took your line. I, I weigh in public. I weigh in public. What's your, uh, <laughs> what's your Twitter account for the uh, scale? Uh, I did the same format as you. I think I'm Jason's scale. Jason's underscore scale. Good. Or maybe a- it's Jason's underscore a fat bastard. <laughs> no, it's Jason's <laughs> underscore scale. We, we have a standard. For this, yeah. yeah. And so Jason and I both have Wi-Fi-enabled scales, and uh, when we weigh... Look at you got the great weight loss there, That's though. great. Trying, trying. That's great. Good I'm weight loss. to do this. Good. Yeah. yeah. We good. Want to join the club of crazy people who live in public. Don't be fat. Don't be get fat. A scale. Get a scale. I'm telling you, is it not terrifying every <laughs> oh. time you get on that scale every and, morning? And I do it every morning, and, 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 and you know, it hasn't gone down in about three, four days, and I'm thinking, oh, shoot. We got to think weekly. We got to think weekly. Yeah, I know. But and anyway, you know what's really interesting about it? Do you ever get on the scale and then you're thinking, I don't actually know how much I weigh? It sort of makes you like a contestant on the on the on the biggest loser because it you can't like jump off the scale and not have it sent. Yeah, no, I hear a drum roll every time I get on my scale, I hear a drum roll now. It calculates it <laughs> and there is no way to stop it from uploading. So if all of a sudden you're two pounds heavier, too late. It's like, too late. It's already on your Twitter account. <laughs> Everybody knows so what, what is the scale? What is the name of the it's scale? It's called the Why Things. Yep. W i t h i n g s dot com. It's on Amazon, but you can also get it directly from Why Things. It's one hundred fifty nine bucks. It's not a cheap scale. It's beautiful. It does bot. It, it does a BMI and a calculation, and also does What's your, your BMI? fat. My BMI is too high. I think it's thirty one. It's we, you gotta I'm like get it down. twenty eight point. That's good. You're good. I'm, ah, I'm still out of the range. I'm still out of the well, range. We're all, I, I we're look, all gonna get there. We're all gonna get there, and we're gonna do it in public. I know it's gonna take time. It's hard you, know when, you, you can hook it up to your um, Google Health. I did that. I did that. And then there's this Daily, other thing. Dailyburn.com. Daily Burn. I yeah. was just checking out Daily Burn. That's, That's a great site. I uh, have a really good iPhone application tip, just a final thing. Um, I'm not involved with this company or anything. I just, uh, it's called iFitness. And this application. I use it. I love uh, it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. And so you pick what you want to work out. So like I, I pick what I want to work out. I'm doing then, the chest workout. Yeah, I was doing my. Yeah, I like your chest. Um, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, uh, it's man. What are you doing after the show? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, no, but it's really cool because you can pick. Like, I want to do this barbell press, and then uh, you're not going to see this. Actually, it, you can, it, can almost it, see it over my. You sky. can see That's it. Pretty dope. Yeah, it shows you that how to do it. It has a description, yeah. and you can and record then it. Has it. Video. You record and it. You it has can, video. And yeah. you can do. It has video now. They're they're putting video for each one. I so love they, it. They, they record it on a white background, and then you can say, "I did this many reps." Ba 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 ba. And uh, anyway, this is all coming together. It's Daily very- Burn also has an application that will upload your food. Uh, they have several applications that will upload your food yep. and your I workout. I just got Daily Burn. I like Daily Burn. Daily Burn's great. I think that was one of these companies out of like, not Y Combinator, but another company, um, uh, Techstars out of Boulder. Interesting. Which is one of those like incubators where you go for like a 10-week course and then you start a company. So uh, it's a really... I like I like well, I like this whole space. I just remember I was doing fat blogging a couple of years ago, yeah, and I was yeah. like, this, "There's something here about, you know, the community support, which I guess is what Jenny Craig's about." But with the Wi-Fi devices, is we're doing it. We're you know we're getting the support, and I have two thousand people following my scale and and saying good job or whoa, better get back on the diet. And I think that's very valuable. Every time I look at a plate of food, I think about that goddamn Twitter account. <laughs> Every time I'm just like, <laughs> it works. Oh, last night it my sounds wife had crazy, but it really brownie. works. Yeah, and she had this it's Belgian brownie. It's like this. She's no, chomping yeah. away at a Belgian brownie, but I, and I'm just sitting there dying. I do not know. Any, I, I've got a list of tweeting scales uh, at at Leo's underscore scale, twitter.com slash Leo underscore scale. Not one woman. Yeah, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, that's no. interesting. No woman would do this. I think as a guy, you get rewarded for being fat. You're like, eh, I'm drinking beers. I'm gaining weight. Hey. Whatever. Who cares? Look at Tony <laughs> Soprano. Nobody, nobody. Hey. hey. What? Girls still love me. <laughs> speaking of, speaking <laughs> of multiple accounts on the scale, if I got it, can you I can. Do it so my wife wouldn't yes. do it? Yep. Yep. Ah, okay. Multiple accounts. Right. And they don't all have to tweet. You know, you can no, you no, just no. send it up privately. It has all the privacy things. You know, it's great if your wife, wife my wife got on it. And it knew that was another person had used it. Said, "Would you like to add another person?" It knows that you didn't lose 180 pounds in one day. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> sweet. It, it actually figures out who you are. And if you and if somebody goes on it who is not in the system, when you go to the interface, it's like, "Who is this person?" And yeah, you can assign it. You so can if, add you, them. if you didn't yeah. use it for a week, you'd be like, "Oh no, that is mine." It's I really lose cool. Yeah, no, it's really cool. It's well done for for one point product. Pretty amazing. By the way, Daily Burn. Uh, you were talking about things like Y Combinator and. Uh, 
Tom Friedman has a great article in the New York Times, uh, Steve Jobs, 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 in which he says the thing we need to do right now is incubate startups. This is what's going to save our economy. Sure. That's why I'm investing in them. That, yep. I mean, that, that's why yep. I'm bullish. Yep. That's what's going to save this country. But that's what we need to spend. Not on stimulus. Support startups. Support entrepreneurs. Get new businesses started. That's the solution. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Dwight Silverman is at the Houston Chronicle. He blogs at blogs.cron.com slash tech blog. And, of course, you must read his tech blog. It's a really great source of tech news every day. And we're going to see you, if you feel better, and I hope you do, at uh, the Apple event. And we'll get you on our... Uh, Obsessive compulsory coverage. Yeah, you'll see me regardless of how I feel. You may not hear me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what time on Wednesday? I'll be there. Shirt? We start. Uh, uh, I'm going to commit to 9 a.m. We might start a little bit earlier, maybe 8:30 a.m. Live.twit.tv. That specific time, and we the event is 10 a.m. till whenever. I don't know. Usually about 12, uh, 10 or 8, 11 or 30 or Are 12. Are you bringing a couple of like different Wi-Fi things or different Evdo cards to try to report from there? How are you going to do that? Well, we can't obviously stream from inside the event. They don't let you do that. But we will. Yes, exactly. We'll stream from outside the event uh, with Evdo. And the same thing when we do, we did CES, and we'll also, after the event, we'll then have a roundtable. We'll do Mac Break Weekly of everybody who's around there, including you, Dwight, I hope, uh, uh, kind of, you know, obsessively decom decomposing what, uh, what Apple has said, deconstructing what Apple has said. Uh, and we'll just keep going. And I'm going to come back to the studio. We have our This Week in Computer Hardware shows at 4. We'll continue to talk about the whatever we know about the hardware. I think there's a lot to be said, uh, and we're going to cover it. And Because... Truthfully, what else are we going to do? You know, we could cover the State of the Union, but I think this is better for us. Much more important. <laughs> and it may, be more, it may be more relevant. <laughs> it may well be more That's relevant. Right. Yeah. Ugh, Obama. I'm excited. Yeah. We'll t talk another day. Yeah, another uh, show. This week in disappointment. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> this week in effect. <laughs> not, for, not for Dwight. Dwight knew. Dwight knew. We give him credit all along. Dwight did know? I think so. I knew what? Didn't you? You knew you were you you weren't exactly in the uh, in the Obama camp. I want to believe. Oh well, I can't say which camp I was in. He's a but, journalist. Uh, Look at that. See how objective he is. Yeah, I can't say. <laughs> See how objective. I can't say. I want to believe. I wanted to believe. I just want effectiveness. Just get oh, something done. A leader. Can we have a leader, please? Anybody? I'll say that. I'll believe in that effectiveness, please. Please, not in this day and age. In this day and age, we we know how to do these things. Let's do it. Uh, I mean. It, it, how on earth the not I know it's not a political show, but when you look at the Afghanistan decision, it's it's like it's not the decision of the right where they wanted to send in a whole bunch of troops. No, he and, splits you know, the baby every time, every time. Yeah, and it's like that's not leadership. Well, and there is the tech angle, which is, and this is what baffles me. He he galvanized, he mobilized an entire cadre of young, wired people using techniques right. like Twitter and Facebook and webs. And then what happened for the last year? He didn't talk to him. Didn't talk to him. You know why? Because they're going to have it. They're going to be so infuriated and not agree with his decision. Well, they are now. They are now. He had the opportunity. Town hall meeting now. Maybe he does town hall meetings now. Maybe he doesn't. If he does a town hall meeting now, it's going to be a thousand people saying, "I thought you said we're going to get out What'd of this you do? war." Yeah, what happened? What What happened? What we happened? can't win in Afghanistan. There's There's no winning. It hasn't been won for a thousand years. We're not going to change things. Now, see, now we're really going. Now we're getting depressing. Let's let's stop right now. Think. <laughs> right. Let's talk about the tap. We need candy. This is, you know, this is what's what Apple's going to do for us, even though it is going to be the beginning of the end of all productivity because it'll be Farmville everywhere. But at least, you know, it's like bread and circuses. It's like, it's Soma. At least we'll die happy. Absolutely. And on that high <laughs> note. <laughs> it, hey, can this thing have a Bluetooth wireless, like, headset? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome if it was, like, had Bluetooth that just connected so you just put it in your ears and but like each one was independent and just boom bluetooth onto the device from your ears to jobs ears he's not really into that bluetooth is no he? i didn't like the bluetooth why that's a with another weird steve jobs he's thing. got is it, these prejudices the name yeah he doesn't like the tooth thing or he, the doesn't blue? Like yeah, he doesn't like blue no, ray he doesn't like either. blue ray or bluetooth it's right. blue he, he doesn't like he blue. doesn't like the licensing for that it stuff. could just no, be it's color. The color blue he just could hate the color blue it yeah, could be no that bluetooth, simple no blue so ray. they called it Silver tooth, they'd be, he'd wait be happy with it. No, wait a minute, because remember the first iMac was Bondi Blue. Can't be that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, can't that's be that. That's true. Jason's Twitter account is simply at Jason. I don't know. He's magic. He was able to do that. And there's a great picture of uh, a girl. <laughs> Dwight Silverman is also on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle, Dwight? D Silverman. D Silverman. Easy to remember. D Silverman. 
and uh, follow him. And now I'm on the suggested user list. So stand back, world. Here I come. I'm verified. Uh, the too. new improved is suggested. You user. know what? I actually like the the, the 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 way they've done it now is the right way to do it. They should have done it this way all along. We got you, breaking news. You've got lists. You've got you know you've got uh, you know it's not automatic, so there's nobody getting a million. Yeah, but you are getting a thousand a day. I think Three I am. Per day. All of a sudden, I'm yeah. getting quite a, quite a few a thousand. more hits. Is uh, it a thousand? I don't know if it's a thousand, but it's quite a few Mike, more hits. Michael Arrington headline overheard. Steve Jobs says Apple tablet will be the most important thing I've ever done. That Mike just, just said that. Uh, yeah, he, somebody overheard Steve Jobs say this is the most important thing. That's clearly what they're leaking. That's clearly the message coming out of Apple is that this is Steve's capping achievement, his crowning achievement. That's yeah. why I'm excited about Wednesday. I, I, Wednesday, starting at 9 o'clock, twitlive.tv. Be there, be square. We, um, maybe I'll call you at the end of the day. And please we'll do. We'd love to, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Just like the end of the day, like the last guy when yeah, you close the shop. Like, what is that, like five, five six o'clock you close up? Uh, make it five. Four. I don't want to. I'll probably be yeah. exhausted. But. I'll, I'll back clean up. I'll oh, see. This is, this is why, I, why I just love sites like TechCrunch and, and Arrington. We haven't heard this firsthand, but we've heard it multiple times, second and third hand from completely independent sources. <laughs> Which means everybody's people, just repeating everybody else. Let me tell you right. something. You can complain all you want, right. but TMZ and TechCrunch are right more often than they're wrong. <laughs> well, maybe. That's true, but it drives me crazy. It drives it's me. The, it's not know, journalism. Like journalist That's because you're a journalist. It drives me crazy. Right. And, the, and, you know, by the way, Mike does this all the time. And half he's not right all the time. I mean. I know, but he got a lot of things right. I mean, he's broken a lot of stories. You have to give him credit. All right, I give him a little credit. But and I mean, it doesn't matter. You read it knowing that he he yeah. he'll post a lot. He's going to be a little bit freer with what he posts. It's like the gawker so. of you know. It's good. It's fine. Yeah, it's, I don't have a, a problem little, with it. it. They'll run with things, and you know what? They run with them, and it's a tech. It's a new technique that makes journals crazy, which is they run with the rumors right. to see if they can get confirmation. Right. Whereas a journalist picks up the phone and says, "I heard right. a rumor. Can I get confirmation?" These guys use the blog and the public channel to get the next thing, which is why they beat journalists all the time because they're willing to put out the rumor. Exactly. It's a technique. It's a, it works. It works for him. We, we invented it out of the gadget. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then no wonder you know so much about it. <laughs> Peter Ross invented it. Now we know where it comes from. Jason, yeah. so Dwight, great, a great show. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for watching. Remember, we do this live every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it live.twit.tv, and we'll be back here Wednesday with full day coverage of Steve's most important thing he's ever done. It's going to be No big. pressure, Steve. <laughs> I am going to be no front and center for that one. I cannot miss that one. Live.twit.tv. be great if, like, the, if his presentation crashes? <laughs> And like blue screen and dash in the middle of it. He'll kill somebody. Yeah. Sam Rice somebody will right actually out. die for that. Yeah. Literally, he'll cut somebody's arm off. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you Pretty next awesome. time. Another twin is in the can.